Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Let me know where you got that green dot. Okay. Green dot. All right. Give me five seconds. Handled well. That's beautiful. All right, we're live, boys. From beautiful Royal Palm Plaza here in Boca Raton on Gas Digital, the new GasDigital.com. It's your boy Gerard Michaels here. And to my left, that's six foot three, 200 pounds, and every one of them is a problem. The master of punks, the tamer of sages, the king of the ring himself, the CEO of the RNC, pretty Mickey Gall. What's up, Mick? Doing good, buddy. Hey, we got a special guest here today with Very your mouth full guest. of food. What's going on? That's right. It's my last bite. All right. <laughs> so in the house we have here today, we're joined by one and the only. The only person I acknowledge is King Henry. I know you got your uh, your hockey goal. Not only do I have a King Henry, big night tonight for the Blue Shirts. Game hey. seven versus the Devs. Hey, I'm not even worried about that, that old king. We got the new king, the current king, King Henry. Henry hoofed in the king house. King Henry. Let's go. Hey, hey. What's up, welcome. Guys? Welcome. Shout Good out. Here. Big friend of the program. So King Henry. I see you out there. You're, you're rocking the Kill Cliff stuff. Kill Cliff Gym down here in South Florida. One of the uh, now, I've been told by many people that you're one of the best striking coaches in the world. Is that that's something you? That's uh, correct. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. No, uh, I mean I do my thing and uh, and it works. So uh, yeah, I think we have a very big program. And as you see, our identity of our gym is kind of striking based. Of course, you have. People nowadays, they can wrestle, they can do everything, but we still want to knock people out. That's our game, you know? That's what we try to do every fight. That gym you're talking about, you mean that gym? That's that gym. That gym? Nobody wants to talk about it, but we keep <laughs> fucking pushing it. It's <laughs> that gym. Yeah, Killcliff FC, yep. That's yeah, the that's right. Killcliff FC, uh, but it referred to in the UFC as that gym. That gym, it's really? That, gym in, that big gym in South Florida. That, that, bi- that big gym in yeah, South Florida. Yeah, I don't think they want to give the, uh, the promotion. I mean, they got Monster <laughs> Energy. <laughs> <laughs> they got to worry about so they, they don't like to give a uh, kill clip. Oh, like, that's, fa- we're so, no, we're that's so big. phenomenal. We're so big that, that they don't want to call us by our name, you know. But you know what? As long as they know who we are when we fight there, it doesn't really matter. It's really cool because at the end of the day, it's what happens in the cage, you know, what we show there, uh, whatever name you give it. Most of the time, it's uh, it's about the fighters, but it's cool that uh, that people now started picking up that hashtag, that gym. Because it's just a weird situation why little players, you know, I mean, there's enough fish for everybody, but uh, they try to downplay it every time. Even when they film us in the in our gym for the countdowns, they got uh, they got a note before they fly out like, hey, don't put any kill cliff on there. No try shit. to blur, yeah, they blur it out and everything. Do they really? Yeah, they really the do. The name it. of the gym, yes. that monster money. Yes, that <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but, but, but you know, the, we, there's no Kilcliff can there, and the, uh, we we have them in the refrigerator. Yeah. To our guys, we know it's good, but it's a really weird situation. Um, but we have very good partners because you can also lose your sponsorship because of that. You know. Sure. Um, and they try to take away all the money for everybody and keep the money for themselves. Why we're just in the same business and trying to do our own thing. But good luck, these uh, these people are good partners, they understand that, you know what, um, m- even more eyes and more ears on it, you know, because, uh, yeah, you can't deny it. Are, are you guys the first branded gym? Are you the first? Because, it, I mean, this is very common, like in, in soccer, you have the New York Red Bulls, you have teams all the time that are that yeah. sell their naming rights. Are you the first I think branded so. gym? Yeah, I think so, and also we are not, like, this gym is owned by, um, by us, by the guys who started it and by the guys who joined, like the people from inside. There's not like one rich guy that owns a team and uses it as a hobby thing, you know. Mm-hmm. We build it from the inside. Uh, we try to get our teachers from the inside, people that fought before for us. So, uh, and then we uh, we have very good partners. It's not only Kill Cliff, it's Black Rifle Coffee. It, there's a lot of, you know, um, a lot of good companies, you know, that are, are with us and trying to change the game because, again, uh, MMA needs to change, you know, uh, and it's not only money wise, but uh, on the public, it's a very b- big sport, but still very small in my in my eyes, you know. If you get this small stuff that the people like try to do, but uh, I think we can change the game uh, by putting the good people and the good partners on our side. What Pe- changes on a, on a larger scale are you trying to see in the well, game? F- of first, MMA? first of all, I mean, like 
as a business wise thing it's like i'm not just a trainer you know i'm also the owner and i'm also at meetings with sponsors and i'm also at meetings with people that are interesting partnering with us that's a big difference you know it's not just sure. a trainer in the gym and here's what you're going to do no we decide what we're going to do together that's one thing so we learn from bigger companies from big uh, from lawyers from people that are uh, on the other side so we learn we know how to defend ourselves if, uh, if people try to like step in our game because at the end of the day people forget that the whole time the UFC and every organization it starts with the student and the trainer you know and the gym and then Facts. one day yeah one day the guy becomes good at the sport and becomes a fighter and then one day he will become a UFC fighter and then everybody jumps in managers organizations everybody jumps in there but we put all these hours and all this time together all these years uh, and then just people just step in. Uh, now it's enough. And now we just step in. Yeah, nobody wants to run the race, but the the finish line gets very crowded, right? You know, you take a kid from the from the bottom and get him all the way up to the top. Then when he starts making his title run, everybody wants to get a piece of him. I would imagine that's that's the cycle of it. Yeah, we. I mean, we bring the talent to the show. Like it, it, in in for instance, in soccer, I know that for a fact. But in football too, um, the head coach or the, the owner of the team. Or the head coach comes out of the bus with a plane first, you know, he's respected. When we went to Fight Island, when it was like lockdowns, the coach was sitting in the back and the ring goes in the front. <laughs> like, that's ba- yo, that's how like, it is everywhere. Yeah. The ring, the ring girls, girls fly the first class. The ring girls really? Down. Everybody. There, were, there are camera people there. I, I know yeah. I respect everybody, whatever they need to do. But come on, man. I'm 6'4", 240 <laughs> exactly. pounds, and I'm sitting in 52E. We're stuffed <laughs> Yeah, we're stuffed with our shoulders, well, trying not to spill onto like, the when person next to us. When we walked in the us. plane, they were, they were drinking champagne. Yeah, I bet. And I'm, I mean, I'm not, not a spoiled guy, but... You should have been a ring girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe you know, I mean, you know, as a ring maybe girl, reflect on your decisions that you made somewhere else. Maybe, along maybe, along, yeah, yeah. But uh, that's just the way it still is. And I think that just... Not because I own the gym or because I'm the trainer or whatever, but it's just underappreciated, I think. People let's, forget. Let's start all the way back at the very beginning for casuals, people that are just MMA fans. Who is Henry Hooft? How'd you get into See, the I want to go to the way beginning. The too. way beginning. I want to go to the way beginning, but I guess we'll start out with that in the, you know, in, in regards to the sport. Yeah. How'd well, you I mean, guys hook up with the, you, you know, the Black Zillions and, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 you I, were a fighter. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I was a fighter. Yeah. Back in the days when there was not so much. Uh, so much internet and it's other shit. It's hard to pick going. where to start with Henry. Yeah. It's just so much. So, I, yeah. I started very... The very I, beginning. Yeah, yeah. I started. That accent's not from New York. Where no, are you from? No, no, no. I'm from the Netherlands. Okay. So it's the kingdom of the New Netherlands. York. It's kind of New York because... New York, Harlem, and New Amsterdam. It's all, all, bu- it's all built by us, by the way. <laughs> it's very all built true. by us. It's built by us. Coney Island, Coney Island, the Holland the little, Tunnel, everything. The Holland Tunnel. Holland, Co- yeah. Conus was uh, rabbits. Apparently, a lot of rabbits out there. So that's where oh, they are. Coney <laughs> Island. Well, Conus, I guess, was a I Dutch word. That. Yeah, it was, uh, that's what. I well, uh, so so I um, uh, I started t- training young. I mean, I played soccer like everybody in the Netherlands does. Soccer, then from soccer to karate, kickboxing. When I was very young, and in the Netherlands, kickboxing is kind of. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a national thing. Like a lot of people oh, really? do it. Dutch kickboxing. Yeah, that's, Dutch the ki- that's why they call it Dutch kickboxing, really. But but uh, start very young with kickboxing. S- fight a lot in the Netherlands. Uh, it's a little different. We we look at fighting a little different than uh, at this level in MMA. We don't really look at result. I mean, everybody wants to win fights, but we do. Fr- we just frequently fight because we just like to fight. The gotcha. competition is good, like you have in wrestling here and everything, you know. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that for for a very long time. I mean, uh, a lot of fights. Um, and then in 2011, one of my students, Tyrone Spong, he was invited to come to America to train with Rashad for a fight. Do you know who Tyrone is? I don't know Tyrone, but Rashad's a friend of the program. Yeah. Tyrone friend of uh, Rashad. Tyrone's is a bad motherfucker. Is that right? And like, I, I don't say that lightly. Like Spong. that, that dude's like a legit lion. Like that's a dude you feel his energy. He's yeah. Mm-hmm. Tyrone's a real one, mm. like a real, real one. Mm. Yeah, yeah one fact, of the baddest men on the planet. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In kickboxing, probably like one of the be- one of the elite, elite. I mean, we talk about ten times world champion here in MMA and all these sports, but that's when you defend your belt ten times. Sure. So we are twenty times world champion if you count it like that. But anyway, Tyrone is a world champion in every weight class he ever fought. So he went from 65, 63 kilograms to 69. What, to what, is, what is that in real people weight? <laughs> 145. Okay, cool. 
But yeah. he, when he it? started, when he started, like when when he started, he was probably at one forty-five. He's got to be about well, like two thirty now. Two thirty now. Whoa! But yeah. in every oh, weight class, he became world champion. His You've re- seen his highlights, bro. You've seen his. I highlights. know the You've name. You've seen him not, knocking name. people out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's one hundred twenty-five and seven, and he has like ninety. One hundred twenty-five and, and, seven. and seven in kickboxing. Wow. So, uh, but anyway, he got invited here, and he was here for a couple of weeks, and then he he contacted me. He speak, I you need to come over here. Uh, and I said, well, you were in Holland. Yeah, I was point? in Netherlands. And we have a gym there. We have a lot of fighters there. So I speak. Well, I can. It's very busy. We have like two people fighting for a belt. And he said, no, no, no. You need to come here because I'm a tra- training partner. But we need a trainer here. We need somebody that trains people here because mm-hmm. it's a mess. Like they're very good fighters. We had. I have to understand. 2011 was Anthony Johnson just came up. Michael Johnson, Rashad Evans. Uh, we had like. Uh, yeah, Joe Santiago, uh, JC Cavacante. We had like a lot of these younger guys, uh, up and coming guys that time, and um, and then he invited me to come. and I, And I remember I, I was supposed to come for three weeks. I started, I stayed six weeks because when I came, him and and Tyrone, me and Tyrone, we were just we went in training and practice, and we just beat the shit of everybody really, mm. and just make the training so hard, like we trained in the Netherlands that. Of course, not wrestling wise, but striking wise, but they were like, "Holy shit, this is different." So we sparred different. We started to train differently, and after a couple of weeks, they kind of offered me a job. And when they offered me a job, they they called out the number that they would pay me every year. And I was like, "You're gonna pay me that for teaching?" I mean, in the Netherlands, you don't make any money. Like, you don't make any money with kickboxing. Yeah, when you have a gym, you make money, but you have to do a lot of work and you have to have a lot of students. But it's good, good life. And, and again, we, the Netherlands is simple, really. Like, it's, uh, they're not simple people. They're smart, you know. But uh, we live simple. You don't see a Rolls Royce or a Bentley every day like you see here, you know. it's Everybody's on bicycles, planes. I've heard. A lot of yeah. bicycles. And if you have the money, yeah. they, they, they keep it low-key. You know, they they went without a government for nine months. I love the Netherlands. No, the Netherlands is, the Netherlands is it's a cool, it's a really, really cool place. By the Gerard way, hates government, I by hate the way. government. Who? Gerard. Not government. a fan of government. Oh, oh, what is government? I mean, politi- government, politician? Like, like, uh, yeah, like the leader. Yeah, I, so, our, so our, our prime minister goes to work on his bicycle. Yeah. He, he passes by and you say, hey, asshole. And he's like, hi, how you doing? <laughs> we, have, we have a king in the Netherlands. The yeah. king goes to soccer and drinks beer. Yeah. Sits between the nice. people. Yeah. So we are... The, well, the whole, the whole man uh, of the people. Yeah, the, the Dutch farmers took over, and uh, you know the government just yeah. like they basically they were like ah we quit, and, we're, and everybody was like screw it, we don't need it, and they went they went for nine months without a government yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. the Netherlands, and it nothing fell apart. It's kind of a test case for my best case. How scenario. long ago is this? Uh, this was last year. Yeah, yeah. And this this was was last year. The yeah. farmers still when they they just won. Yeah. the B the BBB or yeah, something yeah, like the that. Big, yeah, the, yeah. So the big, uh, and, and there's like farm the lady that runs the party is like a right. farm girl. She's, she's a farm girl. She smokes and she uh, yeah. She's like uh, they went from she looks like a man by the way. But she does. Uh, yeah. She does. Which is why I'm confident she'll do a good job. No, she's gonna do a good <laughs> job because in the Netherlands when you get chosen, you chose. But anyway, it's like a really. Uh, Oh, it's down to earth country. So when I came and they called me, t- told me the number, I said, you know, listen, I'm going to come and I'm going to start with the normal number because the number that you call me is like, it doesn't make any sense. Sure. I keep going, number, number. I show you what I can do and then later on we talk about wait, it. Wait, wait, you, you asked for less money? Yeah, because I didn't really, I don't, tr- I didn't trust that number because I think, okay, that's maybe just bite, bite me in. Yeah. I come there and then. That's then, definitely the least American thing about you, for sure. You just yeah. negotiated yourself lower? Yeah, lower, yeah, because I said, if I, if I, cho- if I, sh- if I show you what I can do, yeah. then later on I can, I can tell you that I'm worth it because you just saw what I was doing. But It's very I, noble. Yeah, I, I mean, that, 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 that moment was a good thing and, and I did it and we, uh, we went from here to there. Like this crazy. is the Black Zillions. Black Zillions, 2011, yeah, we you, started. Okay. We had a very good, good group of people. Uh, and I must say that I brought the striking there, and we, we, we did the same as in kickboxing, really. I remember I, w- I was just really starting to get big into watching the UFC back then. The Black Zillions, I feel like, were kind of like the NWO of the UFC for a little bit. They, like, took over. They were like yeah. a gang. They'd all show up together. They'd yeah. go to the fights together, and it became like... To me, and I and again, I'm just a casual, the Black Zillions were the very first gym or group of people working out that I remembered by name. Like, you always mm. knew who Chuck Liddell was. You knew who the Iceman was. You knew, you know, you knew uh, Randy Couture, Boss Real. Like, you knew these guys individually. Yeah. But you never knew, like, a group, the Black Zillions, that was it like... Was, it was such a group that they made... So they had a rivalry with American Top Team, and they made a whole... Uh, the Ultimate Fighter 
Black Zillions versus American Top mm-hmm. Team. Like it was, mm-hmm. you know, they were like the they right down the road from each other, and like the the two biggest, you know, best gyms in the in the country. And we've talked about this. You know, one of the things, you know, me coming from a, an entertainment background, I look at MMA differently. I look at it as like a product, an entertainment product, right, as opposed to like a you know the pure fight sport that you guys look at it as. The team aspect, I think, is really really interesting. From yeah. like a competition standpoint, I would love to go like have a team to root for, like the team kill Dude, I versus that team. To, I X. pitched that to Dana White one time. That's a gr- I mean, it's a brilliant idea. I yeah. mean, it's it's you know, imagine didn't go for it, <laughs> I, but you got five five six fights in a night, and you got this team versus that team, yeah. and you're you're down by two points. Oh, you're saying you're, like have like like how the the IFL used to be? Like yes, like like uh, like college wrestling kind of. You know, right. like hey, we you yeah, know five weight classes or whatever. Yeah, well, and then you got the individual who's the best wrestler, and he's a heavy weight and he's the last fighting and he can he knows he can out wrestle the last guy but he needs five points for the knockout for the team to win you know like like it's just drama there's just drama there's intrigue as a fan and again I, i'm gonna get crushed for saying this by the mma you know purists that to me makes the the watching experience better because it, it's just it, it's become a very long drawn out the, the saturday night it takes from five o'clock to ten o'clock i watch i want to watch one or two fighters and then you know i'd love to be able to like see Teams versus teams have this team versus that team, that team versus this team, and then again, like you said, instead of me waiting for the one guy I like to fight twice a year, I can watch my team every week or every two weeks. Yeah. It, it's a lot of intrigue in that regard. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, uh, we we have it kind of because we have ATT not far away, and, and I really don't see them as competition uh, because, like you just said, it's team team, but we don't really fight each other really it's just like these people in the same neighborhood are two different gyms um and we have like the best fighters and they have the best fighters so every show we nearly have we have always two three people on the card and then i see mike brown and all that guy they have two three people on mm-hmm. the card so it's kind of cool that in florida big win for christian guy uh, yagos guy oh, Agos, our boy christos oh, that's yeah. christian my bad i got christian over the right christos sorry i got christian yagos. on the brand christos yagos the 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 pretty malaka big left hand yeah Saw so you, you yeah, now he gave you a big shout out at the uh, at the end of the knockout. Now he won fight of the night, and he said yes. you said you were going to end it with a left, huh? Well, I mean, if you fight a southpaw, then a left hook is like a, a money shot. Gilbert Burns knocked out Demi Meyer. I, I know Vicente Luca knocked out a couple of guys with that left hook. I mean, it's like really underestimated, you know. Uh, but go back to that uh, about, about the Black Zillions and ATT. I, I didn't go on that show, so that's another cool thing, I think, because. Uh, First of all, they're paying these people to come on TV like a couple of hundred bucks a week. And I think to myself, listen, if, if, the, if I go on TV, I'm real, you know? So people are going to use that shit. They're going to use the way I am. They're going to, you know, mm-hmm. I have a lot of people viewing and they're making seven or eight hundred dollars a week to be on TV. And then I have to do a drama shit and hate on people that I don't really hate because they're just other people, you know? Mm-hmm. So I said no. Until now, I think I'm only one of the only coaches that said no to the uh, to the Ultimate Fighter show, and I just out of principles, you know, because I just I just don't. First of all, I don't like the format, the way that they just again like they they, they put trainers in the in the in the, in the light like they're just people that are there. You can if I'm not there, another trainer can come hold pads and sure or like yeah. like like I hate it when people tell me, hey, uh, who are you cornering tonight? And I'm like, I'm not cornering nobody, bro. I'm a fucking trainer. My fighter fights that I've been training for a long time. Or when they say a pet holder. Like it's like it's not the important thing, you know? You don't like the term coach either. You prefer No, trainer. I don't like the co- term coach. because In the Netherlands, it's a little different because I think a trainer has something to do, much more to do for me uh, uh, as a guy that teaches you skills, you know? A coach, he makes the whole plan and he makes the whole thing around it, you know? Right. Um, I believe that skill and will beat every game plan, you know? I don't think as a fighter, and, I, and again, I have 111 fights, as a fighter, my game plan is, I not have a game plan. I mean, if I find my opponent, of course I know when he's a wrestler, I need to stop his takedown. When it's a BGG, I need to watch out. I know what I'm getting into when I fight somebody. But when the fight starts, and you know that as a fighter, the fight starts. Whatever yeah. happens, happens there. You have a couple of things in your mind, like you just said, you, f- you finish somebody with a left hook. You train on that, and sometimes it works out. But the 90% of your train doesn't come, doesn't work out. Mm. So... So, so again, like I said, I, li- I like to work on skills so that, my, that I know that my, my, my fighter goes in the cage or in the ring prepared, like cardio-wise he needs to be good, mm-hmm. and he needs to have skills, you know, and the will uh, to, 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 man, 
a lot of pain, you get very tired, and you're underpaid. There's three things in our sport, you know, so you need to have a real will to compete. So I think that's much more important than all these people that I know. Uh, whatever they want to do, they do. But with all the things that they write down and look videos and blah, 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 a lot of these people never fought themselves before. Of course, you study some videos. Sure. But it's not like, oh, you're going to one step to the, I'm going right. to do this. And, and this and th that's not what it is. If you kick one time in the block, you can't kick anymore. If you, if you break your hand, you cannot do this anymore. If the guy switches stance, or in, in MMA, it's even worse. One week before the fight, you get changed opponent. Yeah. And then you lose, oh, I didn't prepare for a softball, or I didn't prepare for a wrestler. Bro, you need to train all your skills. If your skills are good, and, and then we come back to kickboxing. It, uh, come back to kickboxing. If you lose a fight because the guy is better than you, it's not so bad, you know? Mm -hmm. There's nothing bad about losing. Here they make you look like, if you have a couple of losses on your record, they look at you like, well, you have losses. If you go to Thailand, they ask you how many fights you have. In the Netherlands too, they don't ask your record. They just ask you how many times you fought. If you fight 200 and you have uh, 40 losses, when you say that here, oh, you lost 40 times. Yeah, but I made that walk 100 times and I won 60 of them. So, uh, you know, it's a little different perspective. And if you go in the fight, with the mentality of compete against another guy without the pressure of you have to win every fight, mm -hmm. that's not always in your own hands. You got judges, you got your day, you got your own body, you got his body, you got his mind. There's so much stuff. A lot of factors. A lot of factors that just, a lot of luck. Mm. That left hook from Christos, uh, of course, that's 20% of skills, 30% of skills and 70% of luck. That guy just needs to be there right at that moment. Mm -hmm. So, So what I feel, that's why I tell you guys, I never do a lot of podcasts and interviews and talk about fighting because I don't like to look on Twitter and see every every uh, every, every trainer telling what other fighters should have done and and do. They're brand building. You think that those guys are I mean, out there I mean, to why should you talk about somebody else's fighter or somebody else's fight? Why? I don't, I'm not interested in that. St stick in your own lane, you know? Just talk about yourself. Don't criticize other people. Yeah, and do it in person. But don't put on Twitter, oh, yeah, the first round, this round, I see that, the, the, this round, too much I, if he, he should have done this and should have done that. You're not, you're not fighting there. Mickey talks about that a lot. Mickey, that's a big thing that, uh, that we talk about, and the, the idea that, uh, you know, somebody eating potato chips on the, on the couch going, this fucking guy, just yeah, shoot, just shoot yeah, the just, double. Just hit him with an elbow, <laughs> dude. Why don't you just fucking elbow him in the head and knock him out? Yeah, but yeah. you also see other trainers, and I don't think that's cool, you know? I mean... There's a reason why people train at our gym, and there's a reason that people train at other gym. So why, 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 why have a problem with that? You know what they're doing? Like just let them do their well, thing. It's part of sport, right? I mean, it's part of sport for people. You do things, and other people talk about the things that you do. It's no different than art. You put something out there, and you're immediately like, I hope they like it. And then all, I don't think that very big, big, big artists don't talk shit about other artists. Well, that's the difference, right? It's, it's not so... You, just to make the, the the delineation, you don't care about Joe Schmo on the internet. No, doing it. it's you think the guys that are in the game should know better. Yeah, yeah, got gotcha. you. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's. I just don't think it's. It's not relevant. But I mean, for the fans, it's relevant what you think. But it makes it not not cool because you see the guy the next week. You see that trainer there, and you can all easily walk to him. <laughs> Do you think they're trying to like steal your fighter? They're trying to like no, but no, no. no they're no, trying no, to just they know, try to put be some out there and get some. Just yeah. cloud chasing, cloud yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of I show how smart they are. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Gotcha. It's easy we, to. We should have done this. Twenty twenty. Yeah. We shouldn't have done this, and he, he shouldn't have done this. And like when they ask me, for instance, again, I'm not talking only about me. When they ask me, what is Gilbert Burns? What's going to happen with Gilbert Burns and Bella Muhammad? I tell them that every time the same thing. They cut it out, but I say I cannot look in the future. I know he's prepared. I know Bella is going to come to fight, sure. and they will fight. But that's because I know because I was a fighter. Mm -hmm. And 80% of these people, also the trainers, they never fought. Yeah, or they have three fights or something, but they never really fought, fought. Mm -hmm. Got knocked out before a lot of people, lost their belt, get really tired, broke their hand or whatever. If you go through all that, you get a little bit more perspective. Sure. And Mickey knows too. Yeah, he like he, he had some great fights and he had some fights where it didn't go his way. And then it's very easy for me and for other people to say, well, he's not good, man. He doesn't. No. That just is a part of for you growing into something that you're going to be, you're going to be better, you're mm -hmm. going to fix things. But if you break that down very early, if you, if you, if you always keep saying that people are doing the wrong shit, then a lot of people just don't have it. You know, mm -hmm. they don't mentally don't go over it. Well, once you get mentally over it and you see it, it's different. Like 
it's just me and me really i'm not fighting nobody else. it's just me and me i i lost that fight against an opponent who was just an opponent but it's just me fighting me so if i want to get better i need to just defend me you know every time that i step in that i need to get better i need to improve because some people go like this and some people go like this but we all want to go there mm -hmm. but some people just go straight there and then fall off and some people go here again and they stay there so that there's a lot, a lot of you can catch people and talk shit about people or saying that people are not doing good and certain times when you see that people are not good uh, because if I on the sideline and you move with somebody I can easily speak oh if you put your feet to the left a little bit more and that's easy that's easy because you stay on the sideline but when you're busy with the guy you got so much more things to worry about so that's the only thing that I that's why I just a small explanation why I don't do podcasts a lot or go on tw Twitter and react on people and everything because I rather just see the train and the next time she's hey you last fight with this and this guy it's r it's what happened that's that's rare and that's you know it's a credit to you and your principles like the way you said you know you didn't want to go on the uh the ultimate fighter show yeah you know what I mean? Like you, you, know, yeah, you, you kind of see through the bullshit, and you're you like, said you're, you're, you can you put your name out there. You can, you can, you can promote yourself. But I rather promote myself with my fighters. You know, I just rather promote myself with the people, the things that they do in the fights. Because again, I already did this. People know my name already. People know already that I won my fights in kickbox. People already know that we won the Bellator belt, UFC belt, one FC belt. Right. People know that. I don't need to. I need to show that to anybody else. You know. So. Um, that's why I just I don't think it's relevant. People want to hear my story, okay, but I don't want to tell it to everybody. I want to tell it to the people that I think are worth knowing my story. Not everybody know, need to know about me. You know, mm. it's not about me. It's about the guy that's fighting that evening, and not like uh, a trainer or somebody just just around it. And like coach of the year, you see my post on Instagram. I make coach yeah. of the year with my photo, and I put a big cross to it. I think that's bullshit. Coach of the they year. They do like a coach of the year voting and they'll put like, you know, some of the biggest coaches in all the gyms. And Henry posts <laughs> puts an X on it and goes, this is bullshit. Don't vote for me. Don't vote for anyone. Wow. Yeah. It's a car. Yeah. yeah. Because the, the, shits on it. Yeah, it's, it's just like principles. The, yeah, yeah, doesn't, doesn't yeah. make make any sense because there's a lot of coaches that don't have good fighters, yeah. but they're doing great work. And who? Yeah, the people voting, they're not in the fuck in each one of the gyms. How? What do they know? They're they're just, it's fans. like a popularity contest. That's true. You know That's a I mean? good it's point. Fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah. yeah coach, well, I guess yeah. what are they doing? By they going by like results? Is it like a Bill Belichick type thing who had the most I don't winners? Know. Or no, it's about clicks. About it's who, about the, which, who's which, in the which maybe which coach? Like if Henry wanted to, he he's got like a lot of followers. He could probably. You know, if he wanted to promote that and make that happen, he sure. could be coach of the year probably every year. But yeah. like, you know what I mean? And give a shit. So you're six foot four. What, did you fight at two twenty five? Where did you fight well, at? Well, no. Before when, I, of course, I was uh, when I was younger. You got I, legs, man. You must kick like a freaking mule. Yeah, yeah. That was also my my strongest point were my kicks, really. Yeah, my kicks. My co but in Holland, we have good combination work. You know, hands and kicks. But yeah, kicking is very important. I think in kickboxing, of course. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I fought my, my best fights around like 91 kilograms. like So that's like 2.8 or something like that. 2.06. Two two huh. Yeah. And sometimes you fight people that are much bigger and sometimes you fight people on your own weight class. But in kickboxing, it's more uh, it, it's easier to fight somebody that's like heavier than you. Not easier, but because the kicks are very hard and everything, but there's no wrestling, there's no grappling, there's no physically, gotcha, like, you yeah. know, when you're wrestling, when I'm downstairs and uh, you're on top of me, uh -huh. <laughs> I don't. Get, it's very difficult for me to get up. But when you're on your feet and I move a lot and yeah. I let you miss your big shots in the beginning, kickboxing is a very technical sport. I um, call that the... Uh Call that the, the the fat guy treaty with uh, with Mickey. When whenever a fat guy, whenever two fat guys are doing jujitsu or wrestling, <laughs> and one person gets position on the other, we all take five seconds to take a breather before we <laughs> continue again. Like yeah, it's, it's, yep. it's fat, fat guy truce. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. All right, I passed. A little ceasefire. <laughs> for a See, it's a ceasefire. It's a daytime. It's <laughs> yeah. a day. It's all right. We're gonna go again in here in five, four, three. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. Took some breaths, had a jelly donut, like ready to go again. <laughs> I got my sugar back up. Yeah, yeah, the insulin's, the insulin's going. Kickboxing is different. The first couple of kicks that you get from a big guy that's like 250 or 240 or whatever, 260, whatever, the first couple of kicks that you feel on your body, you're like, okay, uh, this is this is something that I need to like make sure of not to get hit too often because they're heavy kicks. But as soon as the round goes on and it's the second round, you see them like kind of sl getting slower. Sure. And then when you're a little lighter and I'm still tall and you're a little lighter, it's easier to pick them apart. And I was always a technical fighter. Mm -hmm. So I was a guy that when I fought the, the 80s and 90s, it was always five rounds. So I was always build up my fights towards like round number three, four, 
if I stop somebody, I had a couple of quicker knockouts, but most of my finishes were at round three, four by low kicks or by just they just quit or like the accumulation. Just, yeah, of just shots. Be, yeah. As Greggy says, exhaust hunt. Yeah, You're exhaust yeah, hunt. Yeah, yeah, And then the, I I kind of count the kicks in my head like every round, and then I I know round. 15 20 kicks that guy has a problem you know that like especially interesting yeah, yeah. Huh. but i must also say uh that i was i think i was i could have done a better job in my career as a kickboxer uh and that i think brought me to the level of the trainer i am i got, I got better at trainer because of what i did in the fights because i wasn't always focused on uh on my career you know my fighting career because in the netherlands it's you don't make a lot of money with fighting. So you do a lot of stuff around there, you know. You, have, you always need to hustle, like do all kind of stuff just to get around because money wasn't in fighting. But you always want... So the crazy stuff is here, you want to fight for money, and then you want to make money to fight. Ah, uh, yeah. It's kickboxing. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and then, you know, you never dream of getting like big stuff anyway. But mm. so I also wasn't always 100% focused. And I also, uh, young in my career, I had, um, had a lot of pressure because people think, when they think you're very good... You everything you have to show it every time. So if you wi- win a fight on points, they 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 like why, why you didn't knock that guy out? You know, and people I just you kind of put that pressure on yourself. Yeah, like you felt I that put, put that pressure on myself. So that's why I understand the pressure in, in fighting. It's not for everyone because there was a period in my career where I should have maybe probably won the most prestigious kickboxing tournament, not one, but be in the top maybe because I train with these guys on a daily basis, and they always tell me like, but man, why you why you don't do that in the fight? And then. Um, and I think it's kind of interesting at a, in a podcast to explain to people that if you train a lot as a training partner that I did, you give a lot of energy to the guy that's going to be the star, you know? You're going to give away a lot of stuff that you really needed in the fight because you're a training partner. Your mentality changed. As soon as you start fighting, you fight as a training partner. That just doesn't go away. That's why I always mm. keep my drills and my trainings realistic. That's why I always say sparring is so important to you guys and everything. Because if you're being a training partner too long, your mindset just changes. You don't you don't have that killer instinct type of idea. Maybe or? I, I I mean if you if you hit somebody like I was I was never a guy that was like a Mike Tyson kind of guy. Yeah. But my technique, my eyes, I will, I will know I know what I'm going to do with these people and I know how long it's going to take. So I was never that, that guy. If I have people, people hurt, okay, they go out of there, you know. But I, I, I 100% know, and people around me who were like, who won the K1 a couple of times always told me, you, you should, should, should have win that tournament instead of me. But I was the training partner of that person. So I, I, in training, I was better than them. But in the fight, they were better than me. Until a certain kind of age that I didn't care anymore, I was just fighting, and then I went on again. Like and that's when you had your best. No, my best was before and right after, like good fights against good guys that difficult guys to fight. Like people can take a lot heavy guys that people don't want to want to really want to fight, and I just outclassed them and everything. But like the K1 moments, one of my most important fights, I lost. There were seventy six thousand people in that stadium, Tokyo Dome, nineteen ninety nine. K1 finals and I was at one w- fight before the finals I fought Stefan Leko and he beat a lot of good guys too but he was beatable for me especially with my style of fighting I only he only the only thing he really as is no not the only thing he was very good if you at the K1 level where we fought race safe for everybody you at the highest level people you know you fight the best people in the world uh, he had a very good Ushirigiri so a turning kick to the body to the liver and I know that I trained that I trained in the locker room before we worked out. W- walked out. Then you walk out. I still remember that walkout was so long. I had a Jamero Kwai song on. I, when I was in the ring, it was done. <laughs> that walkout was like three and a half, four minutes. <laughs> it was so big. It was like a zeppelin in the air. It was like Tokyo Dome, the biggest indoor yeah. stadium in the world. Seventy-six thousand people. I looked around like, yeah, that is good. <laughs> uh, this is cool, right? And I walked out. And this is good. Yeah, and then the fight started, and the fight started really good. Both of us were good, but I started kicking him good. And, and I remember I gave him a front kick, and when you make a front kick, make you know, it's a little sweaty, so you, you kind of dry Slide, your feet for yeah. a second, right? You, you, and the moment I, I uh, saw that, the moment I dried that feet, I forget one second what happened. Boom! Mm. I got that kick. It's a 100 kilogram kind of Ushirigiri on your body, you know, uh-huh. like 225 pound kick. That was on the floor. I still remember that. That was my biggest fight. After that, f- and th- before that, I won so many fights, a lot. And after that fight, I was like, I'm, I'm done, man. This is 
fuck that. You know, this my most. There was my chance, and I fucked it up, like something like that. Yeah. And then I went to Thailand to uh, to uh, to see my wife who was there. Uh, I I still remember going. She said, "What happened? Look on your back there. There was all f- purple and black hair from the mm. kick that I got here. I wasn't really hurting, but in the in the fight it was hurting. But and then I went to the beach, and then I saw uh, his name is Rob Kaman. He, Rob Rob Kaman. He's very yeah. big, and people know he's one of the best kickboxers ever. And I told him the story, blah, 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 and, and he said to me, he said, don't don't stop fighting, man, because because of that loss. Come on, man. I mean, but yeah, but it was my chance. But you that, you got more chances than only that. You, th- you don't need chances. You was already champion. You already did whatever. You just fight because you like it. You're too good to stop now, right? And I was I was 29. I was not even old yet, really. Um, and uh, and I was like, yeah. Well. And then a year later, I picked it back up. And I had much less pressure. And I fought the same kind of people, and I beat them, and everything went well. You know, like... The the pressure of of, uh, of of doing it at the right moment, and just the the, the people that are always like like want to see you winning and and, mm-hmm. and thinking that you're so super good. That pressure is not easy, man. That's like that's sure. not for everybody. Yeah, they say. Um, I remember I read a uh, this book. They were like, if if uh, if everything is the same, every skill for skill is the same. The more relaxed guy will have the advantage. Yeah. You know what I mean? The person yeah. who's over too pumped up. And, and shit like that guy's gonna be tighter he's gonna be at a disadvantage yeah you know? well there's also moments in the fight where you just see the shot like you see the boom boom good combination and finish up with the left hook or something and you miss that shot and you sh- and it doesn't know, now I'm coaching differently because now I say it hey if you miss let's just follow up with something else right when you miss with one punch opportunity for another punch but at that moment when you're fighting you're so perfect that when you miss that shot, it's like, oh shit, like, something is off, man. Yeah. That's not that's not good. And then you start thinking. And that guy started like hitting you with weird stuff, like easy shit. And I'm like, how am I gonna get hit? And I'm I'm thinking about him hitting me. I'm not hitting him. And that's a mental game that starts. Right. Well, if you if I would just like move on, okay, I missed the left hook. That means I need to go a little bit to the left. Now as a trainer, I know it. I tell all my guys, oh, if your jab is not working because he he, he checks you. Don't don't stop with your jab. You've been jabbing for like the last s- seven years. Just step a little bit more to the left. Or so now I see it. But as a fighter my, for myself, it was very hard wow. because I was so perfectionist, and everybody always thought this guy is going to be, oh, he's fighting, oh, he's going to do this, this, and this, and then, and yeah. and s- out of ten times, six times you do, but the fourth time you don't do for yourself, you're like, man, this is. Hey, you feel like a piece of garbage. Yeah, it's like garbage. And like I trained two weeks before with the guy who just won the tournament, and I beat the, sh- the Japanese TV cam filming, and they thought it was me. That was the champion, not him. Yeah. How is that possible? Because I give all the energy to that guy. I give all the energy, all my good skills I gave to the guy. When he kept, went in the fight, he used it like, oh man, this is not what Henry does. Henry's twice as good. Like, I he slowed that guy. Henry's much faster, you know? So you felt that you were better in the gym than you were in the... Yeah, I think so. I, I, yeah, I think I was better. I, I, there were some fights where I was like really, really clicking. But it's not that I lost a lot of fights. That's the difference. I, I, it's not that I was like, oh, I lose fights. Uh, like we have, we have one guy in my gym, and uh, you know him very good, Sean Soriano. Yeah, he's probably the best striker. Even in the Netherlands, people that look my videos speak, man, this this guy is really good. Like in the Netherlands, they're very critical about striking, but this guy is so good, and he still never won a fight in the UFC. Well, he outclassed all these guys, and the guys that he all that beat him, they all at another gym, Christos, yeah, yeah. Shailan, Charles Rosa. He was beating them on the feet, but also the pressure, because he's so, the way I talk about him now, it's very hard to handle that. That's not, less, that's not for everybody, you know? Sure. You, uh, you need to, you need to come. And it doesn't make you a lesser mar- martial artist or a lesser person because you can't do it when the lights are on. You're just not the person to do it when the lights are on. <laughs> so, or you have to do it when the lights are off or you need to find your other way, you know? So how do you manage that ambition with your fighters? Because you need ambitious people. They need yeah. to be out there. They need to want it badly enough because like you said, these guys are tired, sore, hurt underpaid all the time yeah they have to want it bad yeah but when you want something that bad and you don't get it there, there's an inevitable come down as well yeah. so how do you manage that kind of ambition with these guys to keep them peaking in the right direction without becoming self-destructive yeah. well that's another very hard thing that people the public don't understand uh, for a trainer we go every week to these events our our highs and lows are so big for fighters of, of course bad when he loses First of all, you got one paycheck. Most of the people get a cut in their face or they're hurt. So you sit in the plane next to a guy who makes half the money. 
he still has to pay everybody, the manager, the gym, everybody. Yeah. So he, he has little money. He has cut face and he lost his fight. Yeah. And it takes him another three, four months to, to come to the next fight. For us, we have to pick them up, rebuild them and bring them there. Not the organization, not the manager. Yeah. We do that in the gym. And we do that every week. That takes a lot of mental strength, you know, like a mental, you need to be very strong because you need to be honest to the person uh, in the good way, you know. Uh, but at least my fighters all know and they can go to internet, they see my loss. That's why I talk about my loss. I don't need to talk about my wins. They see I got knocked out. They know they know that I came over there, that I overcome it. And they see that the gyms with their partners too. We, we talk about Gilbert Burns. When he lost, when he got knocked out by uh, TKO by Dan Hooker, he was like, oh, I don't know, man, about this, that. We just switched the weight class that I always, and he will tell you, I said it from the first time that we met, you need to be 170. Not because I'm so smart, but because you're too big, 230, two, uh, 35 pounds cutting weight. But after the hooker fight, he went to 170. He won, he kept winning, and look what he's now. In the meantime, he, he bought three houses, he changed his whole life, he's fighting every two months, you know. Um, that's just because you need to pick him up the right way, and, and the click needs to be there. And, and um, that's what we try to do in our gym. I cannot do that by myself or Greg alone or somebody else alone with 60 fighters. But if we create a culture, like Mickey now is helping on with grappling. Mm -hmm. uh, another guy is helping this guy. And today, this morning, a couple of people were holding pets for each other. The culture in the gym needs to be iron, sharpening iron. I know that. But sometimes it's not iron. It's aluminium, you know. It's a little <laughs> different, you know. You need to pick it up, help each other out. And then when the group grows, we all grow. Because it's, at the end of the day, you come back to the gym after your loss. And if everybody's just like... Yeah. But if everybody's, hey, come on, head up. I know you still feel bad they the first pick each other up. It really is a yeah, team mentality yeah. in an individual well, even, sport. Even huh? more so I would, than team, I would say it's it's like family. It's like the blood it's blood of the covenant. You know what I mean? You you prepare for war. You spill blood in the gym. You, and then you, you go to war together and you spill blood as well. Mm -hmm. You know, And that's something special about uh, our gym at uh, Kilcliffe. Yeah. Is that when I so I've been to gyms all over North America, right? You go to a lot of gyms, and a lot of gyms are clicky. They got some coaches that are like they want to, they're gonna be coaching your guy to see, like they want to, like, like they they want him to beat you in the gym, right? So yeah. I end up going to a lot of gyms and just going to war in like a bunch of these. Our gyms like is like a family environment. Like the, the only other gym I felt that in is my home gym, uh, Grace, New Jersey, with David Adiv, and I credit Henry and David kind of with the leadership. And kind of building that kind of family environment. You know what I mean? Where it's like, we're, yeah, we're, it's like more than a team. You know what I mean? Like it's a fucking family. Like it's, yeah. you know what I mean? I, th I think when the, the training starts, everybody's a business partner, right? It's business. Everybody has their own business, especially in our Mickey Knows 170. <laughs> it's crazy. We got like, we got like at least, f we got four of them or three or four of them are in the top 10 at 170. Mm -hmm. So our 170 crew and 185 crew is like packed. Yeah, Th These people fight each other. Gilbert fought Kamaru. Gilbert is fighting, uh, Vicente is maybe d fighting this guy. Shafkat is fighting that guy. Ian is coming. Mickey, everybody is By the there. way, Vicente is, uh, besides from me, Vicente is Christian's favorite fighter. Okay. Right. Well, he's one of my favorite fighters too. <laughs> me too. I know Vicente since do we were 19 you, years old. Uh, do you yeah. think the UFC should split the should should split into more divisions? There's 170, just two yeah. pack. 155 yeah. and 170, just two pack. Yeah, I think so because I think you can. Uh, there's 65, a lot of 65, 75. Yeah, there are yeah. a lot of people between these, and only in these weight classes, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other uh, higher, no, you yeah, they're struggling for heavyweights. Yeah, uh, yeah, even two o fivers. Yeah, yeah. You know? mm -hmm. um, yeah, so so again, if you have all these people fighting and these people are training, they're looking at each other, they they're seeing each other. To uh, to keep the good spirit, sometimes it goes hard, but to keep the good spirit is just because uh, to make understand these guys, we need each other to 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 get to the goal. Mm -hmm. You're you're right. It's a team sport, but individuals. At the end of the day, there's only one tra uh, one champion, and I know for a fact that the champion uh, is there, and then the guy that wants to be champion is looking at him, at him the whole time, look what he's doing and how he's moving, you know. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. And the other guy is the sure. champion who's going to win that belt. But the environment in the gym is just built like that. And that's, that's just... That's yeah, cream's going to rise at the top. It's going to come out in the wash. That's the way the best programs gonna, are. Gonna I mean, look it's at... Gonna, that's the thing. Is like we'll, get, we'll get competitive and get yeah. fucking mean for, you know, in, in there. But then it's all love after. I mean, look, I mean, look at Ohio State. Look at Alabama. I mean, you got guys that they come in as freshmen and sophomores. They don't see the field. And then two years later, they're first-round draft picks. Well, why? Because they've been behind 
first round draft picks for four years, you right. know, like yeah. it's, I mean, you're looking at a guy, uh, Baker Mayfield, you know, I mean, he, he had to, they, they kicked him out. He had to go to Oklahoma. He wasn't good enough. You know, yeah. what's his name? Uh, Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. He was behind uh, Dwayne Henry Haskins. Don't, Henry don't know football. Uh, well, son-in-law no. plays the, in the uh, NFL. I never watched one game. <laughs> son-in-law plays in the NFL? Yeah. 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 But I never watched really. I mean, uh, shout out Perry Nickerson. Yeah, yeah, Perry yeah, Nickerson. Yeah. That's what yeah. I, is he related to Hardy Nickerson? I don't know. Hardy. I Hardy know he's Nickerson related to my, my daughter. <laughs> That's what I know. <laughs> yeah. How, yeah. Imagine, imagine going yeah, home. You see like this this cool dude. You're like, hey man, I can't wait to take your daughter out. Then she tells you all about that, and you're like, I will have her home by ten. <laughs> well, I remember, no, it's funny because I remember when when he uh, when when my daughter said, I have somebody who wants to take me out because they met in the gym because off season. He, uh, he's training at the gym, the bar which next to us, but before was another gym. Uh, and then my daughter speak, I'll go out. And it was the first time that she asked me that she was out with a with a guy here in America. And and I'm like, who is that guy? Ah, this and that. He's a football player. Speak. Oh, you're not going out with a football player. <laughs> and then I met him because, um, yeah, they were training in the same gym. And, and he, he's a nice kid, you know, cool kid. He's first, a great guy. First I saw him in uh, dreads and a little like. But he's different. He's not like I like what I like about him. Okay, he's in the NFL, but he doesn't show off. He's not like a showboat. He likes to be home. He's with my my uh, my, uh, my wife. He likes our sport. The funny thing is, he always thought that all these guys make hundreds of thousands of dollars. He yeah. said, "I want to be a fighter." He can't even make a fist, by the way. But <laughs> when, when, when he uh, when he uh, when I told him the, the money that I make, he was like, "Hell no!" He speak. That's crazy. That yeah. I fight for that money. So yeah. that's also what I mean. The big difference is so if he. He's not playing. He makes more money than the people are fighting for belts in our in our gym. That's crazy. Yeah, you know, it's just that's not. Fast. It's, it's not fair. No. Yeah, if you think that's yeah, bad, like you should look at the minor league baseball. Ain't great. The uh, <laughs> the the big thing that you get when you're looking for these guys, and you get a guy that you think you see somebody, right? Yeah. What are you looking for in your fighter? You've been around it. You have fought, like you said. Yeah. You've been in the ring. What are you looking for in a fighter? Well, first, that's very important thing is. It needs to be a student, you know. Nowadays, with this generation that we have now, they, they already think they know everything. They already think they know how to train. Uh, they know also. They also. Um, they don't want to follow the simple st- steps that everybody uh, back in the days needed to do from A, B, C, D. They just because they win a couple of fights. If you win five, f- four, five fights, and you get signed by the UFC and you knock two people out, you're a superstar, you know. For some people. Uh, so the, they miss they miss the build up they miss the fundamentals they miss a lot of stuff. So first of all, I need a student. I need somebody that when I say something, he says yes sir, no sir. And then later on, I like it when they ask me a question: Why should I do this? And they listen and they do it. So that's the first thing. They need to be student. The second thing is intelligence, like an IQ kind of eye, the eyes, um, because I think I can. Uh, not only me, but a lot of coaches can bring skills to uh, to people. You know, I can make you look good in a short period of time if I put time on you. But for you to do that in the ring against another guy that's been trained too, you need more. So um, I look to I look at people that have have the eyes. I call it the eyes, in, and the eyes is not only the eyes if they have blue eyes or not, <laughs> but the eyes is they they recognize stuff before anybody else, mm-hmm. small stuff. And then the third most important thing, and I think that's the biggest key to Kamaru Usman's success, is consistency. You need to be consistent with yourself. Like, I live a very simple life, a beautiful life in Florida here, compared to what I had in the Netherlands, but I've been married for 36 years, you know. People talk about loyalty, about loyalty, and uh, I'm going to be for this gym forever, and this, I, my loyalty stay, starts at home. All my brothers, I have four brothers, all my brothers are still married with the same woman. This loyalty. And we didn't even marry in the church, what they do here. They marry in the church and they promise to that, do us part. They got two, they got two uh, arguments and they break up. You need to fight for everything. So I've been fighting for my relationship for 36 years and I keep fighting to the end with her, you know, because that's the way we do. So I'm very loyal. That's another thing that's very important. Uh, and, and I'm consistent. Every morning I go to the gym, I be there on time, I put the drinks in the thing, and put drinks ready for the guys, the Kill Cliff drinks for the guys. Then I vacuum clean my gym. Then I go outside there, I do a little run. I do my jumps, I do whatever training I need to do. The next day I do back training. Then my guys come in, then I train my guys. I then go back home, eat my lunch. 
after my lunch, I do some paperwork, whatever, what, then I try to rest. I go back to the gym, do the same thing every time. And then I travel on Thursday. I do this in the plane. When I come from the plane, I do this, that. Consistent, the same things. So my, 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 I don't even need to think about what I do. Fighters need to do that. Kamaru Usman is coming to the gym. When, when the cl- training starts at 10, he's there at 9.15. The reps are clean, washed out there. His roll of foam roller is there. His weights are there to do, do the shadow boxing. His rope is there. Whatever he needs to do, everything's clean. He warms up. Everything is perfect. When he starts training, he's warmed up. He's ready to go. Gilbert Burns, same. Mm-hmm. All consistent, consistent doing the same things every time over and over again. And not like always looking for something new or trying to uh, do, don't do this, but don't do that. And, uh, and the problem also in MMA nowadays is that so many people come in our sport you got the craziest things. You got people in pools underwater with, with weights in their hands. You got people uh, standing in, on a line with, with the fingers on their nose pointing to the north-south direction. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I see the worst stuff, but they can't jump rope. They can't do six rounds on the back because it's boring. They need the guy to tell them how good they are. They need the guy to stretch them out. You can stretch yourself out, but they have people that stretch them out. There's so much stuff. It's not a problem, but you do that when you're already there. And also, when you know the fundamentals, when you know this, the beginning, you, ca- you wake up for sparring. The evening before sparring, you need to go to bed on time and treat it as a fight. The next day, I'm going to go fight. So you train your fight there. You go to bed, you wake up in the morning, you know, you wake up in the morning, have a little light breakfast, and you go to the gym, you warm up good because you start, you need to get in the fight mode. Then you see the people come in. Oh, this guy's coming in. I'm going to spar him. He's going to do. You need to go to a certain kind of motion, and then you fight, and then you cool down. You cool down after that, stretching out, like a cold tub, a hot tub, whatever they do, and you go home. And, and that needs to be done consistently for like at least 10 weeks, and then you fight, and then you take off weeks and then you do whatever you want but then you go back to that and i think that's very very important people don't have the discipline to do that because there's so much nice stuff to do sure and, and also when there's people in your ear and they speak man you need to do this stretch it makes you 30 percent better or you need to do this because but they forget that the trainer that's proven the product is working mm-hmm. We fly planes every day. You think that every time when that thing lands, they should change everything on the plane or what? No, no they just put, up, put something in and fly that thing back. When it's old enough, they change it for a new plane. So how do you reconcile that with what you talked about earlier, the, the fact that these guys are making a ton of money, and then as they do the process that makes them more successful, now they are going to be pulled in different directions. He's going to do a commercial here. He's got to do a shoot here. He's got to do an appearance here. Your life becomes more yeah. complicated the more successful you get. So I imagine it would be harder to keep them on that, that only, discipline regimen. Only when you don't. Only when you don't keep it simple. I don't see Michael Jordan or uh, Kobe Bryant. They're still winning, still doing everything the same things. Sure. If you're really good, you know when to separate stuff. You know when when I have to do certain kind of things and not. The only people who don't know you gotta it. compartmentalize, like you know, put like other things in different places. Like you can make shit happen. You know, that's all right. That's gonna be either part of my rest. Yep. Or, yeah, you, know, you got so you like did. Michael Jim to, to that point. Michael Jordan, one of the big things they thought it was a joke when he was doing uh, Space Jam. They uh, he said you have to build me a NBA style arena that has. The, they were like, yeah. well, we'll just get you a He's court outside ball all day. He was like, yeah, but I don't play ball outside, so you need to put the. He wanted a roof. That would be similar to the to the arenas because he didn't want to shoot outside. He was like, "Nah, it's gonna yeah, it's gonna he, mess he, my." He would invite he would, all the guys from the he NBA. He forced them to fly them down. Yeah, and they were like, oh, "This was not what we expected." He was like, "You want Michael Jordan? This is what it takes to get Michael Jordan." Yeah. That's and that's what he did too. He'd have crazy pickup games like that. Yeah, but I mean, with 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 the guys too. We every day you see every day that camera crews. There's always people sure. there. But again, if you. Um, I just think if you get at that level from like Kamaru or Gilbert mm-hmm. or other champions, Khabib, you, you have the financial backup, so you don't need to do everything anymore. You just need to do the right things. Get the right important. people in place. Yeah, and, and also try to like do something for other people Yeah, because you've already been taken care of, and then and go from there, you know, make but the right decision. A lot of the guys that get into this sport are crazy guys, though, too, though, right? I mean, these are street guys. These are tough guys. You're talking about discipline. You're talking about being intelligent, being intellectual, being intellectually curious. You know, the, these are the type of things that make a great engineer a great lawyer these aren't the type of things most people myself included would think like is yeah, you would think but yeah uh, if you really right. th- if you really ask the fighters the good fighters how many street fights they have there you you're gonna you're gonna be surprised 
you're going to be very surprised. There's not a lot of people that are street fighters. Yeah, Mike Perry and these guys. The, it's becoming good. less and less. It really is becoming no, more yeah. and more like There's like less the outlaws NFL. in the game nowadays. More, a lot, lot more out athletes and yeah, outlaws. Sure. I was just did a did a sim, seminar back in New York. There's kids that were kids on my Instagram that are eight, nine years old. They can throw kicks, punches. They already grapple, mm -hmm. yeah. so they don't they don't need to be street guys. You know, uh, I, for a fact, I know that a couple of K1 guys that I know from the Netherlands, if it's Ernesto Hosa, Raymond Bojanski, best fighters, kickboxing, never street fight, never. Mm. It's, that, it's because it's not street fighting what we're doing, you know? I'm, I mean, back in the days, the UFC, when it started, it looked like street fighting because, yep. but nowadays, it's kind of transformed into a sport and you just see that you need to have so much more skills. Uh, it's the same thing when people speak, yeah, when you're f from a bad neighborhood, you want it more than the guy from a good neighborhood. That's most of the time true, but there's also a lot of people, again, that just, if you're a winner, you're not always born in a bad neighborhood, you know? Sure. I mean, uh, actually, yeah, gene right? genetically speaking, if you just want, if you, if you, if right? you like if your parents were, were, were winners, winning, yeah, if you've got out of, you know, but also, also when you already have money, like Mike Tyson, he, he was bad, motherfucker, you know, yeah. he, he should have, but also when he made a uh, hundred million dollars, whether have, I don't even know how much money he made, probably not hundred, but 10 million, he still knocked people out bad and unconscious, you know, the will, I understand what they mean when you come from bad neighborhood, you don't have much sure. and everything. But you also have a lot of people that uh, come from bad neighborhood don't much and they don't do nothing. They just yeah. don't do nothing. And then you have people that are like uh, schooled and very smart. There are people in kickboxing that are like doc that like doctors level sure. intelligent, but yeah, they, they just want to fight. Goes, yeah, fish goes. Doc yeah, like doctors. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all these guys and they're, they're smart enough. It's just because people think fighting is always like that. Um, like the the the, the Neanderthal yeah, shit, barbaric. you know, the barbarian. But is it not at this level? It's just. It's just they have to do so. M they have to know so much more about everything. Uh, not only just fighting, uh, mentally everything. It's just again like it's competing against another guy. You know, okay. It's uh, and then we come back to the put, put to the point where people nowadays complain about sparring and all the other shit and everything. Um, if you're really a fighter, the, the first thing that you, that you like in training is sparring. It's the it's most fun thing there is. Most fun thing there is. Punch each other in the face and then they say, yeah, save your brain cells. But then everybody is getting crazy when there's bare knuckle fight. They love it. Yeah. I don't understand the whole logic about it. If you are a professional fighter, you need to spar. You're going to get in contact. Do we spar crazy? We don't spar crazy. You're not going to spar a, a beginner and knock him out. You the high level guys. You're going to get hit. But in our sport... We have takedowns, we have kicks, we have punches. In boxing, they're sparring like 300 rounds before they even fight. Yeah. There they need to go and talk to these people. But we, in our gym, a couple of rounds on the floor, a couple of rounds there, a couple of rounds there. It's yeah. nothing even compared close to kickboxing, you know, in, in, in the contact. But you need, to, you need to get your game as close as to the fight as possible. So people skipping sparring for strength and conditioning. Mm. what's not really strength and conditioning because they do all kind of new kind of funny stuff nothing to do with Henry that. hates the pool shit <laughs> <laughs> he fucking hates I it. mean I don't hate the pool but the pool is to swim right that's why we have a pool you, in the water the you swim workouts. in the air you fly and in the land you walk that's very simple yeah yeah you know but everybody needs to get make money so they try to get in there speaking so. of everybody needing to make money I want to talk to you about Rudy's Flowers. Rudy's Flowers is a hemp company, but unlike a lot See, of hemp it sounds companies, like you're saying Rudy, but it's a Ruby. It's Rubies. All right, cool. Just making sure. Am I saying Rudy? I don't know. I've been Just doing weird it. things with my brain it. lately, you said man. Rudy. You I, said I did. You heard Rudy. You know why? Because I'm, I'm yeah. listening to you, and I'm hearing Rude Van Nistelrooy. I just yeah, keep yeah. hearing Rude Van Nistelrooy. Yeah, yeah. That's very good. It was a very good player. Right? <laughs> He's a great player. Ruby's Flowers is a hemp company, but unlike a lot of hemp companies, they sell high THCA hemp flowers that get you high, just like a certain other funny-smelling plant. Their flower has been <laughs> bred to have high THCA, which is converted into Delta-9 THC when smoked allowing the customers to enjoy a federally legal high from smoking naturally grown legal hemp. No sprays or additives are applied. High THCA hemp flower is the solution for smokers who don't live in a legal state or are simply just tired of getting ripped off by large marijuana monopolies and excessive government taxes. Ruby's Flowers gives you the freedom to get high by smoking the natural cannabis plant the way you want legally and for an affordable price. Right now you can get an eighth of high THC flower strains like Gorilla Glue and Granddaddy Purple sent 
to your mailbox for as little as $35 on their website or only $25 on their Patreon with taxes and shipping included. Visit rubiesflowerswi.com, which is spelled R-U-B-Y-S-F-L-O-W-E-R-S-W-I.com to check out their high THCA hemp flower and other THC products. You can find a link to their Patreon on their website where you can subscribe for high quality THC products at unheard of prices. Ruby's Flowers will not show up in the Patreon search bar as their products are for those 18 or older. That's rubiesflowerswi.com. Enjoy it with your favorite Kill Cliff beverage. Hey, so n- now that we're getting to part two of it, um, Henry, I want to talk a, b- a little bit about your upbringing and, uh, you know, some of like your mentors, people who guided you along the way, yeah. you know, um, tell, like, tell and me that, about grow- the way you grew up. Yeah. I, I know, did, now, did, would you call, were you guys travelers the way you grew up? Yeah, or? I think so too. Yeah, I think so. You can call it like that, a little different than the normal upbringing. Uh, always like the I'm, like the movie Snatch. You seen the movie Snatch? Yeah, a little bit like that. A little bit like that. Oh, you're uh, Pikey? Maybe. Uh, some people call it that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What's the proper word? It's not Gypsy, right? No, Gypsy's no, derogatory. Yeah, I mean, if you travel, uh, let's call it. Let's do it very simple. If you travel a lot to to make money and to work and uh, live a life outside of like the regular life, I call it travelers. All right, so, uh, like a nomad, nomadic. Yeah, type nomadic. Of video? Yeah, I have it on my Instagram too. Yeah. And also, uh, and I also left my uh, my home kind of quite young to get to get to my career. Uh, I was already only sixteen, and from that moment on, I was already going everywhere. But yeah, I lived in a lot of countries when I was young, uh, close to the Netherlands. Netherlands is close to Belgium, Germany, mm-hmm. France. So I lived in all these countries around uh, the Netherlands and. Um, a different upbringing, uh, but also sports-wise. I mean, my first like training uh, trainer was like uh, Gegard Godot, um, and he was uh, he was the guy who fought in UFC one really. Oh yeah, uh, he, he kicked the sumo guy's teeth out. Yeah, the, you know? yeah, you still see that video on yeah. Yeah. His, yeah. His, the teeth were in his feet and in his hand, and he and with the, when the, with his broken hand, he knocked down the guy and he hit him on the skull with a broken hand. So talk about bare knuckle. That guy was a real. He still is a beast, but. Um, uh, yeah, he was he was he was my first mentor and um, a very uh, very strong, uh, disciplined guy. I mean, karate background, of course. So, um, and like you see in the in the in the first UFC, they didn't invite him for the second UFC anymore too. That was kind of funny because he lost in the finals to Gracie. Okay. But the the story is that he's supposed to fight him in the first fight. And they changed when they saw like some videotapes on him that he was like kind of. Was he? Was he the big dude who was yeah. wearing the karate gi? Yes. Oh, the okay. Yeah. 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 So he and he's very well known. He's like the ninth black belt, uh, ninth time black belt. Outside of Japan, only a couple of the people are like that. So he's very high. Um, trained. Uh, trained with him in the beginning, and uh, and later on in my career, when I, that's kind of funny, when I did my last couple of fights, he was in my corner too. I oh just no posted, yeah, I just posted on Instagram. Yeah, he's still a monster. He's now in this probably um, close to his seventies, late sixties, and he still is like a beast, you know, like big ass hands with these big ass knuckles. And uh, um, they, they they say that I'm kind of like black and white, but he's like blacker than black and whiter than white. He's like there's no just there's no discussion. Like uh, I remember when we run in the when we had to run on on Sundays, we did that little run in the in the hills. We don't really have hills in the Netherlands, but we have sand dunes, you know, because of the ocean. He would just stand there smoking his Marlboro red, Marlboro red cigarette, just ju- run, and then you run, 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 and you just smoke your cigarette, waiting to come down. <laughs> uh, after practice, all the guys too in the gym, smoking and drinking, everybody. That's everybody big smoking, in the, everybody in the smoking kickboxing and scene. They were just smoking and drinking, and they fight. They had cardio that, for, for uh, days. That makes kickboxing appealing to me. <laughs> yeah, it, it was really, uh, it really it was really, it uh, was really, Really uh, cool to see that uh, you come in, the, you finish training, you come, you come in that little lounge, and it was all yeah. blue and black and blue from the smoke, and people were just drinking beers after training. <laughs> Can you yeah, imagine? Like sixteen year olds that were looking around, like what the fuck? <laughs> and they were all like strong too. They weren't. It was not that they had no cardio or something. You know, they were just strong. They fought tournaments, and from that, uh, then I was sixteen. I moved over to Amsterdam, uh, the bigger city, of course. Uh, and there, were, there I started training at the Majiro Gym, who is one of the most famous kickboxing gyms in the Netherlands. My trainer was Jan Plas, who brought kickboxing from Japan to the Netherlands. So for, for everybody that's listening, they talk about Dutch kickboxing. Well, guess what? The Dutch kickboxing came from Japan. Like all these sports come from Japan, BJJ and wow. everything, you know? It comes from, uh, from another country and we, we changed it a little bit and made it our own sport. But it's not Dutch, it's from Japan. 
So my trainer and a couple of other guys, they went to Japan for a karate tournament and they saw a guy training in the gym on the back and he was punching, kicking, he had gloves on and the guy was preparing for a fight in Thailand. And they saw that for the first time and then they went back to the Netherlands and they said, hey, every Friday we have a place that we can rent and let's just do the same thing, karate gi's on and uh, we put gloves on, now we can punch each other in the face too. That's how kickboxing started. And yeah. that, was my, that was my second trainer and he had like... At one moment, we had like 25 people in a group, and from the 25 people, there were like between eight and 11 world champions from that little group. And I came in there very young. My trainer brought me there, and he said, "He's going to be, he's going to be the next big thing. So he needs to train in this group." And they had four different groups, mm -hmm. and that was the last group. And I saw all the big names that I look on the posters and the videos, and I saw them all training. Holy shit! Then my trainer, he needs to train in this group. And the, the coach, the coach came. He said, the trainer came. He said. You want him to train in this group? He's 16 years old. But he is but a child. He's, yeah, he's going to get his ass kicked. <laughs> ah, but no problem, he can do it. And then he put me in the class. I still remember my first training was with uh, his name, guy's name is Orlando, Orlando Grando, yeah. black kid. And I was like doing an exercise and did something wrong and I need him in the stomach. So by, I'm not on, per not on purpose, but I hit him and he was like, Ay! and people heard it. From After that we sparred, I got like knocked down and knocked, knocked down every round. I went back in the car with him and he, I was sitting in the back and he was like, yeah, everything's good. You're going to start Monday, but you're going to trade. One group be un underneath it and I was just thinking about myself, just bring me home. I just fucking, <laughs> I don't want to do this shit. But my mind kind of changed uh, from it. Uh, and that, I think that helped me too with my, like, like with my ment mental thing because I was very young, you know, I could have done others. I was playing soccer too. I was not bad at soccer. I, there was a lot of stuff that, but fighting just, It was just a thing because you do it by yourself, really. In soccer, I was good, but if I don't get the right balls, I cannot do anything with it, you know, if they don't give me the right play. Defense, offense? No, I was midfield. I was midfield, midfield and 10. Very, uh, very big midfielder. Yeah, I was, but I was tall, but I was skinny, but I was I was good. I played in the, in like in the Dutch like youth league, you know, mm -hmm. like from the, like the nationals, you know. Yeah. So I, I, I was good, but I was also doing a lot of bullshit. Uh, it's all already old because I'm old, but I stayed in jail a lot of times, like short times, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was always in trouble. And growing up in, the, in that traveler life, that's that's yeah. a rough, that's rough company, right? Yeah, there. especially because your mentality is like a little different. You know, you go to other countries, and you go to other places. People don't really understand you, uh, what you're doing. And you're you know? constantly traveling, so you're constantly meeting with new people. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You're on the, you're on, always on the road. You're always doing your thing, and. Uh, But also, even in the if you go to another city, just like I said, kickboxing, you didn't make any money. So the, uh, people become bouncers or other people become like a, some kind of bodyguard for some guys. When there's like a problem or they don't pay on time, you have to go there and you did. Yeah. You do stuff. So you're doing like collections and stuff some, like yeah, that? Some, yeah. yeah, stuff like that and all the bullshit. And in the Netherlands, the, the marijuana is legal since 1971. That people don't know the Netherlands is like a narco, narco, narco fucking narco country, you know, like the, one of the biggest. Yeah. I think I think the Mexicans, if you say the, the Netherlands, everybody knows what it is. Sure, like <laughs> the cartels are even there. So you're there. you're buying the weed in in the Netherlands, and then you'd be taking no, it to the other the countries. Weed in, they're making the weed. In oh, the they're Netherlands. making it there. The, okay. the, what they have here now, we did 30 years ago. Gotcha. So everybody in the 90s already had a little room at marijuana. Everybody, yeah. like, and they sold it, and the, so a lot of stuff. <laughs> A lot of cool stuff. It's not even fully legal here in America. Hence, rubiesflowerswi.com. <laughs> That's the best one, by the way. Exactly, won't get in I trouble. I always go there. But uh, no, but I don't get in trouble because it's years ago. But when I was younger, I, yeah, you had to do a lot of stuff just to just to come by. And just because you wanted to train a fight, or wanted to go to Thailand to train a fight. So you did everything you to get money. You to make some money you know? elsewhere. Yeah, you get the money. I'll go over there, kid, pick up that money there, and the guy needs to pay and... Uh, You need to pay. You just go there, pick up. If you don't want to listen, you just make sure that he's going to listen, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. And I was not the most uh, terrifying guy. I could talk good and had that good face. First, it was me. <laughs> If you don't listen, somebody else would come, but I mostly it worked. But, you know, it, it was kind of exciting life. I always tell to my wife, if you think about what, what I all did when I was younger, uh, before I even like became successful in kickboxing or as a trainer, a lot of people won't, Want them to believe it or hmm. didn't think to himself that you're still alive, right? you know? Because I did some crazy shit. What's, what are, What are some of the craziest that come to your mind? I was sitting in. The, there was one moment that is like that I will never forget. I remember I had to go somewhere to meet people because some shit happened. I was just a, 
like some kind of meat, not a mediator because I was not young, but I was just going with somebody. That I still remember I was in a in a in a body shop, a car body shop, with all these old cars, like you see in the movies, you know, like really in the movies. And yeah. uh, upstairs, little stairs, and sitting in a little office like this. And there was a white telephone with the, the telephone back in the days with, with with these numbers that you have to dial, you know. This is literally the gentleman right here, right? They got all the cars downstairs. They got the little yeah, office yeah. Upstairs. You go upstairs, you go upstairs, and you're sitting like that. And the guys, I don't believe you. You're telling you to talk to talk out of your ass. I can see that you're talking to your ass. You're an older guy. I was like, no, this is just the way it was, and this, I, I, it's nothing. And he, oh, really? Well, let me make a call. And be, yeah, I made a call. I still remember, man. It's like yeah, you got you got hands. We, we got hands, but there were hands like like hands, hands full with the oil from the from the cars and everything. And he was dialing that with his big fingers. He was dialing that, and I still remember these hands and thinking to myself pick the fucking phone up and just do whatever you have to do but I, I'm not going to leave here I saw him and another old guy was just making coffee in a plastic little thing he was drinking coffee was standing there people were just working downstairs but the whole atmosphere was like worried me you know and then boom he took the phone he was talking to the guy and he looked at me a couple of times boom, put the phone down get the fuck out of here you know you're good and then when I walked out another guy came up there was some probably his partner or something, another old guy, but he was like this, like all jacked up. He looked past me. <laughs> I went in my my friend's car and he speak, "We're done here." I speak, "Yeah, we drive, you know, just drive." And he was just asking, "Everything was good, right? Everything was good. <laughs> just drive. Get the fuck away from this place as far as possible." You're a little worried you weren't gonna walk out of there so easy. Yeah, I wasn't. I was. I was really worried about that. But it was just. I still remember that. It was kind of. That hand that was just dialing that number, you know, like those hands probably did some dirt in their days, huh? Yeah, not only not only oil, you just it probably does. Probably and I probably could, I fingers. probably could have fired him because I was I can fight, you know. Right. But they know that too. Sure. Uh, you think you can fight? You know, you, you think what you want to do here? You want to yeah, fight? There's some there's some tools that uh, <laughs> yeah, make the fighting a little yeah, you're ineffective. Sitting on, you're sitting on the chair. There's a guy behind you, a guy in front of you. What are you gonna do? You know, but yeah, like like that kind of shit. And uh, and I was also one time I was I was also uh, in a, in a club. I was also one time uh, I was like uh, uh, I was like uh, prote protection for like a rapper, Big okay, Daddy, like Big, Big, Big Daddy Kane. No way! Oh, yeah, shit. he was he was rapping, and I was I was there, but I was for the for the for the club. I was I was like uh, like not a bouncer, but like a security guard also. For I Big was, Daddy Kane, he came there and he he did something with a lady. The day before something, and she came when they were like sound checking. They came in a couple of girls, and that girl had a had like a fro, uh, like a thing that you the like pick, yeah, there. the pick. She had it, and she she wanted to attack or something. And some people were like scrambling, and that lady passes past me when she ran away. She passed me, and I, I wanted to trip her, but I, I tripped her, but I I kind of pushed her, and she hit the wall. <laughs> <laughs> she hit the wall, and when she stood up, this was like all like flat and all the shit. And then my 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 trainer who kind of hired me for the job said you're fired bro you it's not for you man you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna this is just not for you and i didn't really do anything i just no. she she was just there. so there was yeah enough action enough action enough stuff that uh that that, that you had to do because before you even could fight you know and now people just got money for fighting you know so we went through a whole different kind of fucking <laughs> Way to yeah, that trajectory is different where you have to, you know, do that kind of gangster shit just to put on your, yeah. you know. And that was legit yourself. gangster shit. You're no, a legit no, no, gangster. No, no, I mean, it's 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 not like, uh, it, it is. It really is because uh, you don't know what you go. You're str you, they think you're a strong guy. So if they say go in that house, you go in that house. And you think they're waiting for you in stands, like fight stands? No, mm. they're not. Ah. You know, and in the Netherlands, don't, we don't have guns like here. Everybody has a gun here. If you, if you pull, you, you pass a car and you s they do this, you cannot get out of your car because they shoot you. In the Netherlands, they still fight. So there was always, you know, in every, uh, every couple of months I had, I had a fight somewhere. Or with somebody, I just wanted to fight somebody, or I was just talking to you. Let's go fight this guy over there. And see how big he is. Let's see if my left hook works. You know, some kind of stuff. No, is but that no. what you get in trouble for fighting? Also is a lot. That, yeah, that would get you. Yeah, 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 up? yeah, yeah. But not, but not like fighting with just the uh, people. You know, not just the uh, regular guys, but people that are like problem makers or you know people. You knew that there was a like bar there crews. where there were bouncers and they would just beat people up for fun. Mm. And then I would just go there with my friend just. And then I knew the friend not gonna get in because there's there were two or three bounces and we just start fighting them and just beat the shit out of them, you know. <laughs> and it's just like, 
just w- let's see if the left you get a little works. practice yeah left yeah. Hook. my left hook is my fa- was my favorite punch and it always worked and that's why G wears the belt buckle on his uh yeah, you on gotta, his left yeah. hand. It's not you know, it's a belt buckle. It's a belt buckle. <laughs> you know, it's a belt buckle. It's a cool one though. Yeah. It's all for show. Sugar White over yeah. here. Yeah, Sugar White. Th- that that's more America right there. That's yeah. yeah, that's a bullet hole. Yeah, that. that's more America. That's just, I was out there shooting some pew pews. You know, my problem is always cardio. I don't need a lot of cardio for that. So that, no, one, I I was can, said, that one I could do okay. That's what I say. I said, I said, I said uh, they might you, Your cardio is like shit. You look like a fucking cop. Stop <laughs> where I shoot. You don't need any cardio for that shit. You know? <laughs> it's like really true. That's what happened there. <laughs> Cops shoot right away. They don't yeah, even right. run behind nah, you. They, they shoot first and then they speak. What? Hey, listen, give me your papers. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I imagine you had a few runs in with the police then. I mean, like you said, there was no, yeah. there was no I guns. I was in jail a couple of times too. And I'm not, uh, not b- want to be like... Uh, uh, saying sh- stupid shit but I was in, in jail because if you do ro- stuff wrong you need to fucking pay f- up for it you know and also that formed me also because it's, you get locked up and you got like you can do what you really want to do uh, you're inside there your mi- mind especially if you're always training you're always active and then you get fucking locked up and you can't do nothing you can't even talk to nobody in the first couple of months. It's like, it's not easy, you know? Again, bossed around all the time. Yeah, yeah, shit, but, like but, yeah but, but it's different again. Like, in, if you look movies, uh, American movies, uh, you think, I never want to be in jail. But in the Netherlands, it's not so bad, you know? Yeah. Uh, no, it's not so bad. But because you do something wrong, you need to pay for it. It's with everything. So you're going to get locked up and you cannot go out. But it's not like um, the, the guard's going to beat the shit out of you or whatever. They can't do that, you know, in the Netherlands. You, you're going to get into trouble. You're going to get fired. By, by that kind of huh. shit not like here what you see here so um, that's more of uh, of course you got jails that are like really really bad you get locked up and you're, li- you're inside yourself for 23 hours that's not easy too but uh, yeah I did that too and when, and when you're in jail and you, you kind of look like us then it looks like what are you doing here man you're not looking like a guy that you know uh, how many and times were you in jail no tattoos no no uh no, that's the first thing you don't do you don't do any tattoos because you're gonna recognize by tattoos uh, i can be so on i'm every, not a gangster i know you don't need, i'm not a gangster too but you can be on i can be on every picture but just not isn't not me or you have a tattoo on there <laughs> it's very hard the guy needs to have the same tattoo in the same place no no tattoos i don't like needles but yeah i was in jail a couple of times but um nothing major you know nothing crazy i didn't really uh, hit or hurt uh, nobody that uh, didn't deserve uh, what happened, you know? And sometimes you're in a situation when it just happens. Uh, and that's a long time ago, by the way. I was young. Um, stuff happens, you know? But again, it formed me to the guy that I am. I, I've, I've, I'm now 53, man. I've, I've seen stuff, you know? And I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that I am uh, doing what I'm doing now and that I went all through this, but that forms me. And that also makes me the kind of guy that says, if it's no, it's no, you know? Mm. I'm not worried about anything, you know? I... I I already have my really good success. People know my name. I did a lot of good stuff, a little, did, did, did a lot of bad stuff. But there's nothing uh, that people uh, people surprise me really with. Only with, uh, like I said, nowadays there's no backbone. You know, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of shit going on that's doesn't even seem real. You know, in the world and in and in sports too. It's just yeah. Uh, and they say, yeah, you get older, you, 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 you people think, say always, yeah, back in the days was different and everything, but it is. Yeah. It was different because I was younger, but it's also, it was different. I think the best years, you know, is when you're young, when you grow up and you find out who you are. And now I live my best life, maybe, mm-hmm. because I'm relaxed. You learn from all that. Yeah, you have perspective. Yeah, yeah. You have perspective. Yeah. So when, 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 when people come to you for advice, or whatever, I can, I can speak out of experience and also, I can. Uh, I'm not. A, I'm not a saint. I'm not very. I'm not clean everywhere and everything. But I'm a man, you know. I. Sure. I, I, well, I. stand for what I do. I stand for all my guys, my fighters. Like I said, I won't lead by example. You know. That's why I'm in the gym every day, um, and that's what. That's my main thing. And the, the years that I have now, still, that I can do what I do in my uh, in my gym with the guys. I want to build it to something really, really special. Uh, what is the difference between uh, Dutch kickboxing and Muay Thai? Well, the main main things are uh, uh, in Dutch kickboxing. In in, mu- in Dutch kickboxing, you don't have elbows, and you don't have knees to the face. But at a, in, in Muay Thai, it's more uh, kicking is like the high grade, 
So the most points you get for elbow. If you elbow somebody, you get the most points. Um, and kicking and knees and boxing is really a bit lower. We we are more combination guys. So hands and legs. So um, and also we took the clinching out in Muay Thai. You have clinching. Uh, I didn't really like that they took it out because I was kind of tall and lanky. So for me, clinching was really Love good. The clinch. yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, so, but they took it out because they wanted more action. So uh, they took that out because some people just hang out and just, you know. But in Muay Thai, you see they build it up. The first two rounds they do this, third round they start clinching. But in kickboxing, it's a little different. I think we're more complete than Muay Thai because we put the combinations together. We lead with our hands, follow with the kicks, or we lead it's with our kicks. It's a hard style, hard style. Like like yeah. you, you said, when you came to America, you and Tyrone were like whooping everyone up, up in the gym. Yeah. I know... Uh, you know Dorian Price come down to yeah, the gym yeah, a couple yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He lived in Thailand for years. He said the hardest training he does was out in Holland. Yeah. Um, forget it, I forget his name. Ryan something. Yeah, Ryan Simpson. Yeah, Simpson. very, very, yeah, very, very good fighter. He said with very good. training with Ryan Simpson, like the, the work was like, whew, like it's hard, hard yeah. shit. And it's because it's very specialized from punches to kicks. The best like like kickers and punches like dust off. And everything, everything is also hard. You know. So we do everything hard, like on the pads. We start like hard. It's the, it's 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 more. Uh, it's not more cardio because we do techniques too. But there's a lot of stuff on cardio, like fight mentality. You know, um, that's why we st- we we were the guys that still beat the Thai people in their own countries. You know, the Dutch people like yeah. Ramon Deckers and Rob Kaman and Ryan Simpson. These guys, they 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 beat the Thai people at their own uh, at their own game. Is Overeem Dutch? Yeah, he's Dutch. He is yeah. Dutch. Overeem's yeah. Dutch. Yeah. That's interesting. It, and Jean Claude Van Damme, no, no, Belgian. He's Belgian. Yeah. Belgian. He gave me my world title, Jean Claude Van Damme, in uh, Prague in uh, 1993. Really? My daughter was born, yeah. It was very funny because they told me he was like a movie star and I didn't really know much about it, but he was very short. Yeah. Very short. And I, and, and uh, later on, I heard he got like 200000 or $300,000 for, for, for giving me the belt, like for giving. To be attended there, and he had a pl- he had a plane and everything. What'd you make? I made two thousand marks, like uh, <laughs> one one thousand five hundred dollars. But the funny the funny thing is, uh, he, he, he should have been a ring girl. He in- invited me to go to uh, invited me. He had a party upstairs with all girls and everything, and I was like, uh, uh, he, he said, he said, can you come come upstairs? You know, uh, we have a nice party, girls and everything. I be yeah, good. I bring my friends with me too. My friends are here. You know, my 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 friends from the Netherlands and a couple of friends from. Bosnia also travelers and they they they, they come with me, me me too and he looked at everybody and said no it's like it's a close party only you can come I said nah I'm not co- I'm not coming you know my friends are coming or not I'm not coming okay okay so he went away and then we went to the to Prague inside the city and we went wild there I did all crazy shit and was in one club and one moment somebody did this and I turned around and he had the glasses on and he said it's me it's I'm here I, I said, yeah, I know who you are, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to... And then we had like a little party. And then I met him one more time with friends when uh, Rob Kaman had... Uh, he did a movie, Double Impact or something. Yeah, with Rob Man. that's and right. I was there. I went there to see them. Uh, I went with them on the boat and everything. So, but... Uh, that movie's one of thought, my thought, guilty like, pleasure speak, movies. Speaking of movies, uh, Henry's a big Chaz Palminteri fan. Hey! Yeah. Yeah, he's Friend a cool of the guy. program? Yeah, he's a really cool guy. Great guy. Yeah. He's yeah. awesome. Yeah, Great he, guy, he's, Chaz. He, he's like, he reminds me of my father, kind of. Oh, yeah? I mean, the, the way he, the way he looks also, but also the way he, like, like, like my father was also like that, like old school, like... Uh, face expressions and like a uh, real man, man. You oh, know? you know like, what, man? And... and th- there's so many people that are like super fake, like a Jean Claude type of thing. Like maybe he's a great guy, but he's like only you can come. Chaz is gregarious. He's amazing. Had us over to the house. I mean, he's just he's a he's a legitimately great guy. Yeah. Like like a good guy. If if you're in with him, he checks up on you. Yeah, he tries man, to help you out. I didn't realize you were going to New York this past weekend, or I was. I wanted to connect you guys. Yeah. Uh, next so the next time you go up there. Yeah, for, uh, for sure. I want to meet him because he's like really cool. He's a good good actor, cool actor. Yeah. So, of course. So but, we're going, I don't know how long you're staying. I know you're going for Gilbert's fight on the 6th. We're yeah. going to be up there too. Um, I got I got my baby sister's communion. Okay. The, the little one, the, the the younger one, she she looks at me and she's like, hey, you were at Ryland's communion, right? So you know, you're coming to mine, right? <laughs> I was like, right. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going back there for a little bit. But we're going to go shooting with, uh, with Chaz. And uh, David and shit. So if you want to come along, I don't know how long oh, you're staying up there for, yeah. but hopefully well, we can make something happen. But I can shoot for shit. Ah. Bad shot. 
Uh, but that, but I heard that if you listen, it's about enough, it discipline, buddy. Listen, well, you got to do. You got to get up early. You got to go get your gun. You got to <laughs> shoot your gun. And then when you stop shooting your gun, you got to take a nap. After you take a nap, you come back. You shoot your gun. It's like, about discipline, really. Is consistency. <laughs> it's about consistency. Yeah. But the difference is, is that I it would take the punch of my life to knock either one of you down. I could just pew pew pretty quick, and I don't yeah. know. Although I did shoot my first automatic, fully automatic this weekend. That's a whole different ball game, bro. I've never done that before, and that's just I, like pop, 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 pop. you can't control it. You have no idea. You're like, oh, sorry. I, like, I like you see people again, like in the movies, and people are shooting these things. And I'm, I'm a pretty big dude. I, I'm pretty strong. That thing is taking control. If you have you never saw the arsenal, David has too. I know, I know. It, it, it it's has a, very he has difficult. A crazy arsenal. He's like he was in the, like Israeli special forces. He's my uh, like my teacher back home. Like my second father. Yeah. Um, my jiu-jitsu coach for like my whole life but he has and such an arsenal of guns like he he loves them he's like obsessed with them so he's like gonna he's gonna take us shooting i know he, he was like hey send this picture to chaz like him and chaz are sending pictures of like their their arsenals back and forth yeah. to each other that's yeah, america man it's crazy. hey listen it's you a know? good thing it's hey. a good thing you can do whatever you want i, w- I see we have we've had this discussion before i kind of wish there was no guns and it was just up to fighting yeah because then you guys would be warlords <laughs> I, I, say the sa- I, say, I always say the same thing to people as people forget that we were like 200 years ago, I would just walk into a village and beat the shit out of everybody and come home with a couple take of what heads, you want. take whatever yeah. I want. And now because they have like a little gun in there, exactly. you know, it's like... I said it uh, I said it a couple podcasts ago. I was like, every feminist on earth should be the, the person who's, who's most most supportive of the second amendment and I, i'm getting crushed on instagram our comments are going nuts about oh this guy doesn't understand how civilization works okay fatso wants guns it's like all, all right whatever but that's right again that's opinions yeah. people have opinions let let people do whatever they want to yeah, do but they, they're making my point by saying it on the internet it's amazing how nice people are to my face but now how nasty they are on the internet i've yet to meet anybody that nasty yeah, tell in us person about it like you would think everybody is the nastiest person in the world and then you meet everybody and they're so yeah, nice it's, to you it's, it's, you know it's, it's it's sad people who just it's easy to brrr, write some bullshit some hateful shit because they feel bad about themselves probably yeah. they're not happy with themselves like you know what i mean like totally and then totally. when they got and then the, when they get slapped or something happens to them then it's like a big thing yeah oh yeah yeah then these people don't know how to control themselves they how dare or as you? gerard will say they'll call someone uh with a gun yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to come and, and put yeah. you in a box yeah, yeah. yeah. it's crazy uh, speaking of people who are terrible online we have some questions from the live chat hey right, that's hear. a good segue yeah, uh, Henry, I have a question for you. I have a few questions for you from Robert Costa. Uh, his first question is... Oh, it's Rob Costa uh, from the gym. Hey. Oh, the, uh, recovery. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Rob. Yeah, yeah. What he's up, going, Rob? He actually, he's going out... Uh, he's going to, to Ong, right? To Ong's yeah. fight, yeah. Big fan of Rob. Love, yeah, love us, love Rob. Rob. question is, uh, when you've trained people from all over the world, how do you handle the difference in culture and language, and what do you change about your training when training people from different countries and cultures? It's a good question, but the answer is like really simple because uh, I I think uh, I think I, I'm I'm from all over the world, really. So uh, how I'm, many I'm languages do you speak? Well, fluid four, but I mean I don't I don't think in like countries and people because uh, I just think in people. Um, that's a little bit my mindset. So, but yeah. Um, Training wise, yeah, it's it's all different, you know. Pe- some people come from certain kind of countries; they have their specific like uh, qualities. Some people are, like like better in striking. Some people are better in grappling. Um, I just think that the, me and the other coaches, I think overall we have a great program, you know, that's good for everybody. And then the specific points that why we have Said, he's uh, a mountain guy, you know. Then we have Greg is wrestling. Uh, we have all kind of different people that can help with different aspect uh, of it. But uh, I think it's beautiful that we have 33. Peter can speak Spanish. Yeah, yeah. I'm Cuban, by the way. Yep. And then, <laughs> He's and been then, Cuban. Huh. Uh, Sean Suriano, of course, everybody. Yep. Uh, but I think it's cool. We have 33 nationalities sometimes on the map. We have like, we have Christians. 33 nationalities. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. We have That's Christians, Muslims. That's we crazy. have everybody. You have everybody wow. there from every religion and everybody. As, and you see, as soon as the as the training starts, everybody's cool. Everybody's good. We have a Bible study for guys on Monday. Sometimes I walk and I see the, the Muslims. They walk away out of, out of sparring. They come back. They were praying in the front. I mean, it's cool, man. Everybody's good. It's uh, I just think that the, the martial art is the most important thing. That's where they come for. for. It's connective and, tissue. Yeah. And then again, the gym it's what is what unites school. you, not not what separates you. Yeah. You're all there for a common purpose. Yeah, yeah. common purpose, yeah. Now, do you... Um 
what what do you think? Well, it's a two point question to back, uh, piggyback off of that, and then we'll get back to the to the questions, Omri. Do you think MMA is becoming kind of standardized in its style? Everybody's kind of doing the same kickboxing wrestling hybrid. Is there still like a style a gym can have? And if that's so, the part B with that would be what makes the Dagestani kind of wrestling style seem to be so effective? Yeah, I think that I think there's like. A some some gyms you can see the style of fighting that they have of course you need to be kind of okay everywhere a little bit and you need to stand out in some kind of things mm-hmm. otherwise everybody has the same skill sets and everything but i think dagestan is because what i think is their biggest thing is one of it is their faith you know their religion because uh they live a clean life they live a very different life you know they don't have outs I mean, not not as far as I know. I don't know. They see them every day, but they have one thing that they do. They have they have their religion and they have the family and they train. Mm. And here you have a lot of nice things. You have a nice bar. You have a nice club. You have a nice casino. You have all kind of other stuff, and that's nice. And especially if you want to live that life, distractions. But they have much less distraction. And then they're also still old school. If you see the training and everything they do, they still and they have. What I also like about them is they have respect for elderly. You know, they really believe that if you have experience that you, uh, you, you, you're there, you know, if you're older, you're there, and they have respect for that. Uh, even when they greet me, they always put their, as that mean, they always put their head on my chest instead of just right regular. No, we have to lower than you, you know, when you're an older person, you know. It's not always good to be old, but uh, but it's 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 really uh, respectful, and and then and like I said, consistency. They learn from very young, every day the same things in these cold gyms there where everything is just, you know, it's... Um, yeah, I think their mindset, they have like a different mentality. But at the end of the day, they're still human, you know. Yeah. They still can be beat. But it's very difficult to beat a very determined, consistent guy, you know. Um, and we have a couple of these guys in the gym, and I really love that they're there, you know. They bring a lot of uh, different vibes in the gym, different mentality. So, yeah, I like it. I, hopefully next year I'm going to go see a couple of these countries because we have a couple of these guys from our gyms, but Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, all these like different countries. I want to see how it goes there. I see it's fucking beautiful. All these mountains and all this yeah. shit that's going on there. So, yeah. But you got to uh, wrestle a bear when you go out there, though. Bears don't kickbox. I, I can't you even gotta... wrestle my own wife. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wrestle for shit. What else do we have from the uh, comments, Amr? Uh Yes. Another comment, uh, another question we have is, uh, for Henry, how can you, this again from Robert, how can you tell that a young fighter has something special in them and will go far? And have you ever been wrong? Uh, well, for sure, I've been wrong. I mean, you, you th- that's how you learn. You know, I made mistakes, but I thought like, oh, this is the next guy, the next level guy. Uh, but yeah, I know you can see. You can see like, uh, you, you can see in, uh, in in some young guys, you can see again how they act. Uh, we have now a couple of young guys that come in early. They start like at 8.45 to do some trainings before the real training start. The young guys, I, I call them the young guns. They come in early. They want to do more work. Uh, they always, they always watch the, the bigger guys, the champions, and everything. So they see, they see stuff. So, uh, yeah, I can see it when they want it, when they really want it. I can see that. That's the first step. And then skill wise, of course, you see how their body reacts, um, and, and what they prefer, what kind of style they prefer. Prefer. So, uh, who are some yeah. of the guys in the gym? Obviously, besides for myself, uh, that you're most excited about. <laughs> well. Uh, beside of you, <laughs> it will be very hard. Yeah, not be, yeah. We, we'd be uh, talking for too long about. Yeah, yeah, me, that's so. why I don't. Let's not don't talk about you and me. But uh, well, well, um, of course, one of the things, one of the younger guys that springs out of there, a couple of younger guys, but one of them is really is Nikita. Nikita uh, yeah. just had a beautiful knockout. Yeah, he's a beautiful, beautiful. knockout. Uh, like he's uh, he's very young. He's very talented. He's very good everywhere. Great striker, good wrestling, very hungry, undefeated kid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then we have the Nigerian kid who's very talented. Adamu. Uh, yeah, Adamu is really, really talented. Uh, Mitch McKee, uh, the wrestling kid. Um, then we have um, we have so many uh, so many of the young kids. And then we have uh, Alexi, uh, very young kid. He's in PFL. We were talking about him uh, on the Christos episode. Yeah, he, he's, I think he's going to go far. Yeah, he's going to go far. He's really, really talented. Uh, and we have a couple of Japanese kids that are young and talented. Uh, Na- Naoki, he's just ba- went back. Yeah, yeah. Um, he had a little injury, and I'm worried about that because he fought Archuleta. Um, but one's he, tough. Yeah, one's very one's tough, very and tough. he ha- he has a little sprain. But the guy is the, the Japanese kid is really really good, like talented yeah. kid. He was he was signed by the UFC when he was 19, but his division, the 125 division, they want to get rid of that time, so oh, he ch- he went back to Ryzen. But he's really ta- <laughs> talented. Um, yeah, and even also 170, uh, other Japanese kid, um, Yusaka. He's uh, only 22 years old. 
uh, Mahe, a Chinese guy who's 21. Uh, so we got like a lot of, Ian is not 25, you know, we have yep. a lot of t- really talented kids that, uh, that, uh, that are. He's amazing. fighting my, uh, my boy D-Rod. I hate it. It's like every week I got like friends fighting. <laughs> Every I know that's and a good thing. That means you got friends is. getting paid, man. Yeah, that's yeah. a good thing. I, I like I like D Rod too. He's a really uh, he's a good dude. And it's going to be very a very cool. tough fight. Really going to be. This is going to be a good test for Ian. Yeah, uh, cannot underestimate him. He's a very good boxer. He has a lot of experience. Um, tough guy too. So uh, we will see. You know, uh, he needs to he needs to step up, uh, Ian, for this fight for sure. Right. I mean, he's been doing the right stuff. He's been he looks good. He, yeah, he's been getting better step by step, and so it's it's a good thing. But it's still. Uh, He's still a young guy, and it's it's a it's a fight that kind of came quicker than I thought, you know. Yeah. But uh, but it's good to to see to see how far you're at. And Sean Soriano's fighting bare knuckle MMA. Yeah. Is, is that the same night as Ong? Uh, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the yeah, same yeah, night, yeah. right? Oh, and he. That's Sean, game bread. He, yeah. Down here, yeah, in Florida. Yeah. Sean is Emiliano is. And That's uh, uh, Masvidal's. Masvidal's. Yeah. yeah. And so it's he's doing bare knuckle MMA, not bare boxing. Bare knuckle MMA. Interesting. Yeah. I valet like two days, the valet valet awesome. two stuff, yeah. man. That's cool. Yeah, so they're doing that. Yeah, we got a few guys on that card. I think Darren's three. on it too. Three, three guys. Yeah. Okay. Three I didn't know four. Emiliano was on it too. Yeah, That's Emiliano's what's up. on that. So a lot of guys there. Yeah. What is now? I got to put you on the spot because slick and thick. Slick comes first here. What does Slick make the ruler have to do to become world champion here as as the coach for the world to see? Looking yeah. at the future. Don't give away any too much. One one seventy well, champion. Well, well, what I think with Mickey is that uh, I think his career is. I wish he was with us from the beginning, really, um, because he has skills wise. He has everything he has. Of course, he's handsome. He gets the look. He has the looks, which uh, is very important for fighting. very important for fighting yeah. because you're on TV. You don't want ugly people on TV. I don't like that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> skills, skill wise, and also uh, he wants to learn. He's like a real, real student, you know. Uh, uh, these fights in the beginning with the the guys that he fought were were okay, you know. But I think um, I think he I, I think he's at like f- maybe maximum forty percent of what he has in him. Really, mm-hmm. uh, this, this this injury is a little uh, maybe a blessing a little bit and a little bit of a uh, I don't say the blessing, but a little bump it's a in the road. Thing. But bump yeah, I think road, it's a blessing in disguise. Blessing for you, sure. so, so you can mentally refresh yourself because of uh, your results that you had. You know, your last fight. You know that, that you need to clear your head a little bit. Because I really believe, and I'm not saying it because he's here, he has all the skills, striking-wise and on the floor, you know. Um, he's a great team player, you know. He's somebody that uh, that helps out with other guys. And I think that little time off is going to help him, you know, get him, getting him ready for the next thing. And um, the only thing he needs to do is he needs to work hard, put the work in that he will be doing, you know. He, he's already doing that now. I see him in the mornings. When I work out, I see him just doing his things and everything. But... Uh, I, I really look forward to the next fight, you know. I, I look forward to rebuilding. I, I like that rebuilding kind of thing too because, mm-hmm. again, maybe in MMA it's it's something that's really... Uh, uh, they lose a couple of fights, like I said before, and they forget about people. I think there's nothing to do with it. It's just a part of the whole project, you know. Okay, this is not working, so we do this and this, and then we fix it, and, we, and then we go on a roll. But we don't know where he where he ends up. I, I just I know that he's much better than what he just... Showed. And you uh, and you earlier in this said that you had a loss and then you took a year off and you came back. So yeah. you are in a perfect position to. Yeah, I had I I, I I took longer off and also I mean I lost the most important fight of my career there. You know that was and that was seventy six thousand people saw me on the floor looking at the lights. That's like that's not cool. You know? Liver kick, huh? Yeah, liver we, kick. We talked about that in our last. Time. What does a liver kick uh, feel like? Because Dave Portnoy from Barstool Sports, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He was watching uh, live tweeting the Javante David, uh, Javante yeah, yeah, Davis, yeah. Ryan yeah, Garcia, yeah, yeah. and he went on this tirade about there's no way Garcia should have went down on that punch. And that's because he never been hitting the liver. I, I asked Tyson about that too. He said, "Then you know what? Then Portnoy should try to take that punch." <laughs> just, <laughs> that I was. Wa- I just want to say the same thing. So you need to invite the guy. And just, I can. Uh, need, somebody can give him a liver shot and see how it feels it's the worst thing it's the worst thing I, de- I mean I don't like to get knocked out yeah. anyways I don't want to break my jaw of course but when you get knocked out without breaking anything you boom you just it feel, shuts your feel, body down yeah what I feel is uh, with the knockout I would feel like like somebody just hits me on my two ears boom for a second like the feeling that you have boop mm-hmm. and, then the, and then you just see the referee standing on top of you you know so I didn't have that much I was only knock, knocked out once but mm-hmm. on the body shot was worse because you get it and it's like a second it looks like you get it and it looks like a muscle or something is there that is here 
and it just pulls up and <gasps> and you get and then you get the rope and on and then it hurts a lot especially when you start breathing for like exactly 10 or 12 seconds oh wow which is but just enough for just enough but then if you survive that the guy only needs to fucking point at it gotcha it's, it's it's that organ is so fucking touchy if you hit it it's like for me it's like the worst of course it's also hard when you get calf kicked and everything it's painful you cannot stand on your legs but that liver shot instant bam and that punch from tank was just perfect I, I like that punch was very beautiful and he fought fucking very smart fight you know he's mm. he's he was just so much better. Yeah, he outclassed him. No, he really did. Him. Yeah, big difference. Yeah, you know, you know what? With Gar- and again, I'm just a, a casual, but it looked like Garcia was trying to convince himself that he could stand in there with him in the first round, and he took a couple punches and he convinced himself of the exact opposite. It was like, oh man, this guy hits so hard. So hard. He though. stole so, his own. So, he stole so the com- will from him. Composed, really composed, staying relaxed. And you don't need to do a lot of things, but you need to do the right things in the fight. You don't need to do a lot of things. You, the only time you need to do a lot of things is when you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> that's really what it is. If you fight a guy that constantly is working that's a guy that's technically not so good you know i mean that's just a worker not just a worker it's a worker it's hard to fight these guys but if you are composed and relaxed it doesn't matter what the guy does because everything he does doesn't work really and i only need to hit you with one or two shots if you have that then oh you interesting so yeah. so you're like a more composed less active fighter. Yeah, i like i'm an offensive defensive fighter uh, that's what that's what i saw in tank Offensive, defensive, good guard, relaxed yep. timing, and then at the right moment, same with Tyrone, the same thing. L- a lot of things, a l- l- lot of my fighters have the same thing. They're composed, they stay relaxed, they don't get into, I don't like action reaction too. I don't like it when I get hit d- hit right back. I, 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 if I get hit, I want to first fix my, my, my defense because my shield isn't working. Why should I fucking go fight, you know? I need to fix first my defense and then I attack. Because if you action reaction, that's what I like. I like to pull out an action in you so I can counter you. Just much cleaner shots, you know. So it's um, it's a style that I really like: offensive, defensive, good guard, good pressure, not do a lot, make the guy worry about a lot of stuff, and then just hit at the right moments when when he doesn't want to get hit. And you never want to get hit, but there are moments in the fight where you can get hit. You can take it, but there's also moments in the fight where you can take that shot, and that's where you need to be like really good at, you know. Going back to when you said um, the lessons you learned in your career. One of them you said was like uh, the distractions, like doing having to do other things to make ends meet and whatnot. And the other thing you said about being the the training partner, yeah. right? That training partner mindset. Now was that you were saying you were do, you were you were kicking the shit out of some of the best guys in the gym, yeah? But then it wouldn't translate as well, yeah. Why? What do you think that was? Do you think you left it all in the gym? Do you think you I like, mean, or do you yeah. think? I think a kick the shit is like a big word. I was just better because better. that the guys that I talk about they're like K one champions. So it was not that they like sure. started crying, but I was just I was better, competitive, like really good and com- better. And I, I just I just believe that uh, you are what what you do every day. You know, so if you be a training partner, mm. you work in favor of him. Because you work on certain things that his opponent is working on. Okay, you know? like being like a mimic for yeah, a m- certain mimic, guy. Yeah, yeah, mimic, but also mentally, you're serving somebody. Okay. I'm serving him because I'm your training partner. As opposed I'm, I'm to competing, competing with him, as opposed to in, in, being better than him. I am charged. Yeah, right. It's me. You're leading the dance. I'm leading the, the dance. I'm leading. It's about me, and you are just hired, or you're just here for me. Right. So, uh, I'm the show, and that's that's it. So you. I take it out of a bigger perspective, but that's the way you m- mentally you're gonna talk, think like. Because I don't didn't uh. figure it out myself alone, but I've seen it through all the years. When I see good training partners, same Sh- Sean Soriano, always training with uh, Kamaru, with Michael Jones, with all these guys. Slowly but slowly, you slip in there like, oh shit, because you need to be very selfish as a fighter. You know, very selfish. You need to use everybody around you. You need to take all whatever energy you can get from them because you need to do what you need to do at the end of the day. Again, we said we're in the team. We like each other. I love you, brother, but I love myself a little more. Right. Because that's important, you know. Uh, if you really want to be the star, if you want to be a good guy, it's the other way around. So, and slowly but slowly that slipped in. Also because I lost a fight and I was like, oh shit, okay, I'm going to help him so, so I can get back to the, if I help him, if I train with him a lot, you know, then I then maybe the people see me again and I can get back sure. in the thing. And before you know it, you're a training partner. And this guy, oh man, I love to train with Henry. He doesn't go too crazy and he does exactly what the other guy does. And he's technically so good. He can do this. He can copy the guy. But when you fight, you cannot copy nobody. Uh, you're you know, not you, doing your own no, shit. You're not, instead. So mentally, it's not good. Physically, it's not good. It's just another good move, you know. Uh, so that's why I say 
we do partner drills to help each other out, but in the partner drills, I want to win. Mm. I just want to win my partner drill with you. If I we do partner drills, you, we, we're both good, but I want to be a little better than but you. But that's that, that's that iron sharpens, sharpens iron mentality. Yeah. The competition breeds, it's a good thing. Yeah, um, it's a very good thing. You know, on it's a much, important, yeah. much smaller level, the, you know, when I was in the minors, you'd face somebody that was on a rehab assignment who pitched in the big leagues, and then you'd want to know, like, man, if I can get a hit off this guy, yeah, you know what? That guy pitches in the big leagues. But it's inspiring you know? the same, but the, the, what happens... In kickboxing, a lot in boxing, they do. It happens a lot in MMA when there's a good guy, like we just talk about Nikita or something. Sometimes he's with his hand in the air and sparring around, looking for a partner, because there's no partner. Everybody partners up. I don't understand that. Mm-hmm. If you have a very good guy in your gym, the first people I go to is like the, the best guy. The best guy. I gotta know. I gotta know. How can that guy be, be uh, without a partner? Everybody yeah. needs to pull on that guy, mm-hmm. you know. And that's 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 the bad thing. You always need to try to. Yeah, I know it's hard. He's gonna probably uh, hit you, and he's gonna do. But that's how you get better because you're gonna train with some guy that's at a different level. For sure. You're not gonna get better when you train with people that are your level and everything. Yeah, you're gonna be okay, but you're not gonna be better. Well, that's know? your level. You you're almost you're telling yourself, or like Barwis was telling us, you're setting that. Uh, like, what is that? The, the bar for yourself you're setting like you're saying to yourself this is the level that i'm at this yeah. is where i am yeah. as opposed to putting yourself against that best guy and saying this is where i am yeah but i always say to people when i go to seminars too i speak you guys if you have a partner partner drills with everybody if you have a partner that's not, that is not so good train with him uh-huh. make him better yeah so he will be your best training partner in a couple of years from now, he will be your best training partner. But don't put him away because he cannot hold the pads good or he's not good. No, you need to make him better. If you really want to use him in the future, you need to make him better. So how, that's how you grow together, you know? That's how you do that. But uh, it does make sense if you only think about yourself in, th- in that sense of, of uh, training. There's like a know? balance between that, between the, the selfishness that you have to have, but also, you know, being a team player and p- picking people up as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need you need to pick people up, and you need to also make sure that, like I said, to every 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 gym that I go to, if you make the guys that are not so good better, the whole level of the room will will change. Instead of right. you just training with one guy and leave these other guys, because what you see in boxing a lot, a lot of guys are sparring partners first, and later on they become champions. Larry Holmes, just sure. see my, uh, yeah. Muhammad yeah. Ali yep. and these guys, you learn from each other, and then you get better. They, they, Tyrone go to uh, went to. Uh, uh, I think it was AJ. Yeah, he went to uh, to England to to spar with him a couple of years ago. He came back. Speaking. Joshua, yeah, yeah Joshua. Joshua. Yeah, I hit him a couple of times, and he was like, "Wow, he was impressed." And he was, he came back, and he was like, "I just, I rocked him a couple of times, I think, and this and that." So he tested yeah, himself. He did. Yeah, he t- tested him a little bit. And he was like, and he feel confident, you know. He Bro, I remember he seeing, no-go, seeing but. Tyrone Spong spar with a uh, a big baby without a mouthpiece. <laughs> Yeah. They were just going at it. Yep. Yeah, just straight thugging in there. Just, <laughs> yeah. and, 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 big baby's big baby looks is bigger than you. Oh, I've pounds. seen him. Yeah, that dude. Yeah. And he and he also with Tyrone just comes in, puts his gloves on yeah. without any protection, puts his gloves on, not warm up and just start banging. And yeah, they're just both using like twelve ounces. I was like, I'm fuck, I'm watching like a pay per view right here. That's wild. Yeah. So thirty six years with your wife. Yeah. We you know, Pookie is a is Queen a, Pookie. Queen Pookie Queen big. Shout out Queen Pookie. Shout yeah. out where'd you where'd you meet your wife? How'd you meet your wife? And and uh, she's she's essentially a business partner of yours at this point, huh? I mean, yeah, I mean she's always with me everywhere I go. Yeah. Uh my shadow, but um yeah, uh, so I, I met her in the Netherlands. She was there with family. She has family in Germany. Uh, I met her in the Netherlands. She was from Thailand. I was just in Thailand right before that, when, before I met her, and I was like in love with every girl that there was there. I was very young. Uh, we have people that don't know, 88, 87, 88. There was, Thailand was like, not a lot of people like, yeah, that the people talk about it, but it was different than now. And um, I came back, I was like, holy shit, I need to get back there. Every, every girl liked me, the sport is there, training, beautiful weather, good food. Shangri-La. Yeah, fuck, everybody loves me there. <laughs> Blonde hair, blue eyes, oh my God. And then I met her, and then I saw her somewhere in the restaurant. I just walked up to her, I t- started talking to her, uh, because I knew a couple of Thai words, that's how it started really. And then we keep connecting, and she went to Germany, and uh, I, then I visited her in Germany with her family. And then uh, she went back to Thailand, and I had to stay in the Netherlands for like three months because I had a fight. No internet, no cell phones. How'd no, you guys no, stay no. in stay in contact with one another? No, we stay in contact. We you stay, said it like carrier pigeons and stuff no, like we had, that. Or? We had phones, but they would look like suitcases. You know, <laughs> the, the, the portable phones were like bags like that. Remember yeah. these old cases? You walk around with a case like this. Talk yeah, brick. And then you got like these ones with like a antenna on it. <laughs> you talk like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 
like you see in the Sopranos. It's <laughs> <laughs> cool, but uh, yeah, no. Uh, and then and then I went to Thailand, and then then when when everything went a little bit more official, because I I, I was like I need to stick to one girl because there's like too many girls, and she was so she's also a couple years older than me, so she was like uh, she was a milf. No, she was like <laughs> so she was like she learned me how to te- how how to really make uh, make a wa- make a girl come. <laughs> couple t- a couple times a night, so uh, long story short, that's how we uh, how we met us, and now we we keep we've been rolling forever. Then I made a kid. It's about running. discipline. You just do it over and over and over. Yes, <laughs> warm up, stretch good, stretch together, <laughs> make sure that everything's good. The foam roller is in the right place. <laughs> yeah, and now, it, but before you know it, it's like it's years go so fast, and um, it's the situation in the relation is the same thing. You can't live with them and without them. There's days that you want to. She too with me, kick probably kick me out of the car, or whatever. But at the end of the day, if it's good, it's good. Mm. So I don't believe in better. I just believe in good and bad. So when it's good, it's good. You keep it. I'm not saying that maybe next week we meet each other. I'm I'm, I'm not with her anymore. It can happen. But at least for 36 years, there were moments that we were like it was a hard time. I mean, I traveled the world. I see so many people. Met, meet so many people. You know. Uh, anything can happen in a relationship, and then I was not always a saint. She too, you know. We we enjoy we we enjoy our life, you know. But at the end of the day, you need to find the right person that that goes on. And now, when you get all the funny things, when you get older, now you get a little sentimental. Sometimes you think, wow, we're getting older, man. Hopefully, she never she never gets sick before me or something happened with her. Because living without her at all, like living without her, like a couple of days. Before it was one week. I, when when I go for one week, it was like after five days, I was like, oh, I miss her. Now. Same evening, I call her like, "What are you doing?" Or well, whatever, whatever. And the next day, I just call each other the whole time, and now and you get older, and it gets even worse because she's like you so much. She's like always there, mm. so that's the other side of like being uh, simple and keep your life like that. That when something goes wrong, it can all fall apart, you know, because you're so used to it that it's uh, it's very hard. But anyways, she's a great woman. She is, like I said, she's very fit. Uh, She's very straightforward. If she's your friend, and she was with me also when I did bad stuff, so she even went to jail because of me, you know. So for having your back, for having that. my back through that, like she went to jail because she, of you. Yeah, not because of me, but because I was there, she got picked up too because that was just the thing. But so she always stood by me. Wow. Also, when I didn't make any money for fighting, every always she stood by me. She gave me, she gave me a, a very big part of her life because of my career. So now it's payback time. So, and she's the eyes in the gym. You know, she sees everything. You know, you yeah, know with like your sister. Team mom. You, yeah. you know, with Jamie, and they have women look at look, look the room different than men. Mm. They see different stuff, and and she's so protective of, of her husband that she can see that this is not this is not the right thing, and this is not the right person. So, yeah, like you said, in that sense, she's the business partner, and she knows fighting too. She knows fighting. I mean, her father had a gym. Her father had like a big stable of fighters. He w- her father was in gambling and stuff. So he had like fighters. She's she been around fighting forever. So it, that's another good thing about it, you know. Um, yes, I'm just very, very lucky, you know. And now she's she's already breaking my balls that I'm talking too much and then we have to go. But uh, she's, she's a great person, you know. And I do, again, like I said, I, I will, I hope that we can ride the whole ride out. That would be cool, right? That would be awesome. Meet, stay together, and then pfft, and end wherever we meet. She believes in Buddha, so she she probably thinks that we go to a nice place. I just think I go to some other place where it's very dark and sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Valhalla, Valhalla, maybe Buddha? life starts there. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't be mad at that. You got uh, and, Henry. And that's, this a, that's a big uh, Henry Hoof. Uh, he said it there. I didn't want to interrupt, but keeping it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, that's my thing. That's, that's his thing right there. Henry, th- this has been uh, an absolute honor, man. You are a legend. This is incredible. The only Thank podcast you so he'll do. This is great. It's a Ma- slick and thick show. Mick, yeah. you got the uh, the future champ. You want to? You got anything you want to ask him before we get out of here? No, let's let uh, let's uh, see. If they want to go grab lunch. We'll get, let them get out of here. Beautiful. Yeah, okay. uh, I do have one last question from the chat. Hit mm-hmm. it on. Uh, this one. This one is not for Henry. This one's for. Uh, Gerard is uh, uh, um, this is from Runaway Slav. Uh, they ask, "Do you wear that cowboy hat outside? And how do you take yourself seriously if you do?" 
I do, and I stopped taking myself seriously uh, years ago. So, yeah, I mean, once once about I... About 200 uh, pounds ago. About 200 pounds ago, <laughs> I stopped taking myself seriously, yeah. The second the Cardinals cut me, and I, you know, six months later, I looked down and couldn't see my toes anymore, I figured I'm just going to ride this thing out like the clown show it is. <laughs> That's it, yeah. But thanks, runaway Slav, for uh, telling me I need to take dick. my life more go. and more seriously. <laughs> thanks. Hey, Henry, it. thank you for gracing us, brother. Thanks okay. for coming yeah, on. Yeah, Henry, this was incredible. Incredible man. God bless you on uh, continued success. Good, good, good on Kill Cliff. That Jim. Hashtag that Jim. That Jim. For Omri over the airways. For Christian in the booth. For the great one, Mickey Gar. I am Gerard Michaels, and this has been Slick and Thick on Gas Digital. We With will Henry see you, motherfucking hoof, King Henry. Friday Bye-bye. at one. Peace. Bye bye.